Uh, we are on bill number 252-33 uh, COR is substituted on the floor. And uh, uh, before we, we start, uh, I'd go ahead and ask the Sergeant of Arms, please, to just swear in the administration. And at this time, I'd go ahead and ask the folks on the table this morning to go ahead and introduce themselves, where they're from. Nate, you, I'll go ahead and start with Nate. Uh, Hafadeh, I'm Nate Denight, the General Manager of the Guam Visitors Bureau and the FESPAC Organizing Committee Chairman. Hafadeh, I'm Catherine Kakigi, Financial Manager for Department of Administration. Half a day. I'm Joey Calvo, uh, Director of BBMR. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, recognize uh, Vice Speaker Cruz. We, d uh, I do know that Senator uh, San Nicolas uh, was uh, uh, on yesterday when we took a recess, but I will go ahead and entertain the Vice Speaker at this time. Vice Speaker, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Um, if I could get the director of BBMR, Mr. Calvo, to do you have a copy of both of the um, fiscal notes that were issued by your office? Uh, the, the one February and April? Yes, I do. And um, the problem that we were having yesterday, and I know the problem that Senator uh, St. Nicholas was having with it yesterday w was whether or not you had correctly denoted where these monies were. When you, how do you, pre, how do you prepare a fiscal note? Do you start with a blank piece of paper and fill in, or do you take things and? No, the, pro the process in, in preparing a fiscal note, uh, Senator, is we, we do coordinate with the respective agencies if it affects them, and then we, you know, we, we, we communicate on that. And we, uh, you know, we collaborate and try to get the best number that we can possibly get moving forward, or to be, to present in the fiscal note. So it's 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 you know from from bottom up we uh, we work like in this particular case, we work with the uh, Department of Administration to ascertain the the balances. But on the fiscal note uh, in February, um, we we did um, understate the um, the unreserved balance. By almost nine hundred thousand dollars, I think that's what you're you're, you're getting to, and um, it was uh, there was probably like a misstep or some misunderstanding on our part in looking at the financials, and we reported one point three million as the balance, but the oh. it looks it's the red light is on. I guess I assume it's on. So, so that was, uh, we underreported the, the balance of the uh, hot surplus fund back in February. Um, we reported 1.3 when it should have been 2.3. And that's the 2.3 that I reflected in the April uh, fiscal note, or just the other day, or yesterday. So that's the true balance, and that was a result of, again, collaborative effort between DOA and BBMR to to verify the numbers. So the 2.3 that I, I reflected on the fiscal note as of yesterday is the correct number. Do you have in your computer an ability to be able to just punch in hot bond surplus and it will tell you the true balance as of the 28th or the 27th of April? We work, with, we work to, with or account. Or do you have to call Department of Administration and GVB to get a number? We work with uh, both, uh, again, whoever is affected. But if it's financially related, we, of course, consult uh, DOA. They, they, they put on a, you know. Uh, so who has the ability to be able to make a report of knowing what is in there? I mean, because I, well, I can we, call we my bank right now, and I can... It'll tell me 
what my balance is today, and it'll take into account the charge for gas this morning, and the checks that uh, were, 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 are going to be taken against the account uh, when the bank opens today. That's correct. You, and, and are you, you able to do that? We, we work with the DOA uh, on, on that type of situation. All right, then, Mr. Kiki, do you have a computer that you can just log on and log into and, sa and ask, what's the status uh, and the balance in the hot bond surplus fund? Uh, yes, sir, I do. And yesterday, when, when Mr. K Mr. Calvo called you yesterday and asked you what the hot bond balance was? Yes, yes, he did. Um, they did call me yesterday morning to get an update on the hot surplus fund. So we went ahead and immediately um, gathered uh, the numbers, the revenues, and determined how much is available for new appropriations. And who gave him the number 2023? I mean, 2,300. Yeah, that will be coming from me, Senator. That, that came from you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that was as of yesterday. Yes. As of and yesterday. where did that where did that twenty three hundred two million three hundred I have a hard time. I'm I my account only is I can say twenty three hundred, but I don't know how yeah. to say two, um, two million three hundred. Uh, Senator, the our audit we uh, report we're proud to say for the tourist attraction fund was just issued um, just less than a month ago. So we had um, hard pressed numbers now as far as what the true revenues are. So based on the, um, the latest uh, FY15 audit report, we went ahead and calculated what is the fund balance that should be available for um, appropriations. And you're, we you're a classified employee. Yes, sir. Thankfully. Because had you been an unclassified, I would ask for your termination. Oh, may I ask why? The 2300 was on the TAF report as of what date? Um, okay, what I'm talking about is uh, the It was hot, issued last month, yes. Yeah, the hot surplus fund is funded by um, the excess revenues of tourist attraction funds. So w once we determined what that number is, we went ahead and calculated. Though it was dated in April. Yes. When was the final date on the top of the report? Was it not August, I mean, October 1st of 2015? No, the or audit. Or September 30th of 2015? The audit was just issued uh, less I, I understand, but as it, did the audit continue to take money into account after the fiscal year? Was it TAF, was, was it hot bond at the close of the fiscal year? I'm sorry? Was the TA, the hot blonde, as of the date that the uh, report was issued, or was it the audit as of the last day of the fiscal year last year? Um, okay, I don't understand what you said. Ms. Kikigi, we all filed our financial disclosures here. Uh -huh. Effective January the 1st, we can, uh, I mean December 31st of 2015. I can't say that what I filed in, that because I filed it on the 22nd of April that I can continue to say I had that amount in my account. Mm -hmm. Because I had to take some money out between, October, between J January and today. Right. So what is the balance in the account today, yesterday? Oh, the balance. Okay, the balance of the account is, should be, um, whatever the uh, available balance plus the honest spend it. So right now we're looking about 5.9 million as of 930. That's how much the, is in the cash account. So for the, hot, for the, for the surplus? Uh, yes. And that is a carryover of FY14 uh, fund balance. We and what was it at the end of 15? Uh, it will be five million nine hundred fifty thousand. Can somebody go to my office and on my desk is a copy of the TAF report? 
I'm trying to get to the point, the 2 million, three hundred thousand, actually it's two million four hundred and four thousand dollars. Uh-huh. Is what is in the TAF report. And that was as of the, the end of the, the close of the fiscal year, wasn't it? Uh, yes, but we made um, subsequent transfers. The two, uh, on the two million? Sir, um, when we're talking about the 2.3 million, that's based on appropriations yeah. fund balance. So fund balance is different from the cash. Ms. Kikigi, last month, mm -hmm. this legislature met and we were concerned, here, give this to her. You now have a copy of the TAF report in front of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. What does it say at the top? The first paragraph? Well, no, the title. Oh. As of what date? As of September 30th, 2015. And what was yesterday? Yesterday's April 27. So the balance that would be in that report would be as of what date? This report will be September 30. So yesterday's number that you gave us was as of September 30th, correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So you gave us a report saying that there was 2,300,000 in there. Fun balance. Dated yeah. it for September, for uh, April the 27th. Correct. But in actual fact, that was for September the 30th. Uh, well, the fiscal note, yes, was um, dated what's as of yesterday. But when what happened is we look at the cutoff is September 30 because you, if, when if you want to tap FY15 fund balance, you need to do a cutoff and determine from what from the numbers that we have available in 15, and that's how how we came up with 2.3 million. And last month, this legislature was called into a we, we had to ramrod an appropriation bill of 800 and some thousand dollars for the museum because otherwise we wouldn't be able to open it. Mm -hmm. And it had the same funding source. Have you or, or Joe, uh, BBMR created the, the, the fund account for that $8 million appropriation? The eight hundred twenty thousand. Eight hundred thousand dollar appropriation for the, for the museum. Uh, yes, we established that account. The eight hundred twenty. Yeah. Did you or did you not? Yes, we did, sir. And so did. Is this is that eight hundred thousand on top of this two point three million? Or should it not be take, subtracted from this? It, no, sir. It, sh it should not be subtracted from that. It should or should not? It should not. Why? Um, if we read the, the law, wait. Do you have that Isn't it the same account? Isn't it the same hot surplus fund? No. What was the eight hundred we appropriated for eight hundred thousand we appropriated last month from? That was that was past the that was last month. We have an additional 1.3 million that from this year, which we are going to use to fund the 820,000. What additional 1.3? Yeah, that's what we're tracking for um, 
our revenues for FY16. And that's based on the uh, rev uh, BBMR report that is posted in the website. For unreserved, how do you have an unreserved um, this early in the fiscal year? Do you create an unreserved account in the middle of the fiscal year? Uh, yes, we have, um, we actually, the law um, says that uh, every quarter we should transfer the excess revenues. So um, we did, um, BBMR updated the, the March report, which is uploaded on the website. So 1.3 million is available for the hot, hot fund. For hot what year? Surface. For 2016? The, yes, sir, as of March 31st. So we actually have considerable amount of money, right? Uh, yes, for, yes. So, so I wasn't reading, so I wasn't reading this incorrectly. Okay. Right, I think So if we look at the, the February report, there is 1.3 in FY 2016 mm -hmm. unreserved, right? That's correct. And if we look at the April report, there's 2.3 million in FY15 unreserved. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So, um, so there's actually a considerable amount of money. Uh, yes. Yes. So if, if Senator Munya, since I kept thinking that it was maybe there was a, a typo on the side that was cor incorrect, that this should have read FY16. That's correct. But, it, but it's actually the 2.3 is 2015. Yes, sir. Yes. So there's a considerable amount of money here. Oh. Yes, there is sir. no need to try to reduce anything. We have about $3.6 million that we can appropriate into FESPAC. Because your, Feb your February fiscal note only told us about unreserved funds in, 20 in the 2016 account, and your April report says this 20, uh, 2 million 300 in the 2015 unreserved. The, the 2.3 uh, vice speaker is from the FY 2015 hot surplus fund. That was what Ms. Ms. Mrs. Kakigi was trying to delineate. And so the 1.3 you're talking about is what has been received in FY 2016. Okay. Because yeah. I think so, yesterday, so, so, so in the bill, in the bill itself, it, it just references 2015, and so that's where the focus was, and that's where the analysis and the collaboration on on ascertaining the number is is referencing 2015 as stated in the bill. Because I yeah. think the and confusion. So we just gave what was asked. In the in the, the bill. confusion that we had yesterday was we thought that maybe <laughs> that we thought that the two reports were reporting the same account, but it's not. One is 2015 and one is 2016. That's, it. That's correct, but it, it should have been, it's a, it was a, uh, we overlooked that part. And that's why the Bill 252, the fiscal note I, I submitted yesterday, contains the accurate figure of the 2.3 as the unreserved balance. The one in February, I, I just mentioned earlier, we un underreported what the amount should have been, but it should have been 2.3. So, so it's, it's something that we we're, we're dealing with now to really determine what happened there, but, but uh, the number in, in yesterday's fiscal note brings everything up to par, brings everything up to date. And that's for uh, FY 2015, for as of September 30, based on what is being asked uh, in the bill, appropriating from the 2015 hot surface fund. For 2015 unreserved fund balance, I can be assured by both of you that this 2.3, or as the audit report shows, 2.404 million, right? 
It's available, yes. And as for 2016 unreserved balance, as Ms. Kikigi describes, right. every month any excess goes into the unreserved. I think quarter. I think every quarter. I All believe right. it's a we, quarter. We've uh, now gone through analysis. another quarter. So, what, so we're how the much second is, quarter. How now? much is in the reserve account for 2016 at the end of the second quarter? It's, it's the 1.3 that Mrs. Kiki had uh, mentioned. No, that was right. dated February the 19th. That wasn't the end, the end of the quarter. What's, what's in the Nobody 2016 account as of today for 2016? Sorry, sir. <laughs> what is the, the balance? Yes. Okay. Uh, to, for 2016, it's going to be um, additional 1.3 million for, from 2016 revenues. And so then that we add to the 2015 fund balance the amount of um, 5.2.3. Uh, so that will increase the... That was as of February. Today is the 28th of, of April. How much unreserved is there as of the end of the, as of today for 16? Okay, so the end of uh, March, because we didn't update, um, of course, we, uh, April's not done. So right now we're looking at um, total uh, fund balance of 5.9 million. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because, <laughs> no, but this is, this is um, deducting the current year expenditures. Remember, we have expenditures that we paid out this year for appropriations from last year. So, of course, you need to... Well, what, what is the, what's the current balance? I just said that, 5.9 million, and that's including 1.3 expenditures. That's after deducting 1.3 million. Yeah, so we have 5. Point okay. Okay. Yeah. That would be inc inclusive of, of uh, unreserved balance 2015 and 2016. No. The 2015 is separated from the 2016. Yeah, 2 .3. So this 2.3 plus 5.7, which takes us over almost 8 million in the two unreserves, right? No. It's um, cumulative, Senator. It's cumulative. Cumulative. So it's, it's taking ending fund balance, 15, adding uh, 16 revenues and deducting 16 expenditures. And we incurred one point, we paid out 1.3 million this year, so. But why would, you, why would you deduct expenditures out of the unreserved? Uh, there no. was only one, re one appropriation made from that, and that was the $800,000. Uh, yeah. Well, we haven't even um, expended all our appropriations from last year, so it, it has to roll over. The fund balance includes on on expended appropriations plus on on reserve fund balance. So it's cumulative. So, how much do we have that we could possibly use for FESPAC? Okay, we're back to the two point three million, sir. <coughs> and then that was um, twenty fifteen. Yeah. How much do we have as of today that we could use for fastback? Okay. So you're asking for 16, right? 2.3 for 15 and then 16. How much unreserved have we accumulated since the uh, beginning of the fiscal year that would be and could be available for appropriation to fund fast packs? Oh, okay. Um, uh, 
Yeah, see, we don't compound the, um, the odd reserve. It's a snapshot. Yeah. So the on reserve for 15 is 2.3, but when we roll in in 15, I mean 16, we have an additional 1.3 million in revenues. And so far, we have 1.3 million in expenditures. So it's a wash. So we're back to the 5.9 million. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is the 5.9 less current appropriation is the 2.3. That's how we came up with 2.3. 5.9 and what? Less the uh, current appropriations that uh, the legislature has uh, appropriated from the, from the FY14 fund balance. So we take the 5.9 million and they duck um, what was appropriated from the FY14 uh, fund balance is 3,650,000. So that's how we came up with 2.3 million. Do we keep a, a cumulative amount? Yes. Or is 14 separate from 15 separate from 16? Uh, well, it's, it's cumulative, but if you want to look at a snapshot, you have to look at the, uh, like if you want 14, you got to look at the fiscal year ending the audit report and FY14. Okay. The Nate, this request for 1.5 or whatever that was made, what is it for? Um, Th uh, thank you, Vice Speaker. Um, it's for the uh, operations of the Festival of Pacific Arts. Um, so the total budget as approved in 2013 by the organizing committee at the time was 13 million total, uh, 7 million to be in cash and 6 million in kind. Um, at that original time, the goal was 5 million from the government and 2 million in private fundraising through sponsorships and uh, fundraisers and so forth. Uh, to date, um, so we've, we've been going through the budget trying to get that number down. To date, the cash needs for the festival still continue to be seven million. Uh, we have raised about a little over five million from the government contributions through uh, the TAF appropriations. Also, the one percent of the arts uh, has helped. Um, but we are still short of the seven million cash goal. Um, in in private sponsorship and fundraising, we raised about. Yeah, but but let's go back first. Oh. What exactly is this one point five? Uh, saying operations doesn't do any good for me. Okay. Well, well, I mean, all the all the operations of the festival. So, uh, trans. You know, uh, no. Uh, all the all the logistics of, as far as sound stage and lights for the opening and closing ceremonies and and during the festival for um, uh, also for so I mean the main categories are logistics so logistics would include I just saw in today's yeah. newspaper that we're not going to be able to use JFK because it was going to cost forty eight thousand dollars for the insurance that's correct yeah so that so this one point five cannot and will not include the 48,000 for the uh, for correct yeah so I mean we've been so trying to that's why I'm trying to yeah. trying to figure out as logical and as good a location as it could have been JFK we're not going to use it we're going to have the people all the way up in Mingilao because we don't want to spend $48,000 to go to JFK yeah that's correct sir so this 1.5 is not going to cover that, right? That's correct. We're, we're, we're trying, we're trying, I received oh, okay. a memo from Senator Ugan that he received from J.I. Cruz that there's going to be a need of almost a little over $2 million in overtime for GPD and GFD. Uh, is is this is the 1.5 going to cover that, or am uh, I going to expect a separate appropriation request for overtime for GFD and GPD? Um, 
so sir the, the 1.5 is for the logistics needs of the festival the overtime of gpd gfd and also dpw for the busing uh that was submitted in the governor's bill as a separate appropriation of 1.2 um, but right now we're just uh, with senator barnes we're trying to focus on the logistic needs and so this would this is just the logistic but if we needs. have all this money in your in your unreserved we could we could cover both um i i, I understand where you're coming from but with the 2060 unreserved funds you know how that how that money is transferred over to the surplus fund is on a monthly basis but so the problem with doing it halfway through the year is that we've have you know we've had only two months of surplus in the next two months if we're under you'd have to pull from the first two surplus so i mean just from a fiscal position i don't know if that's if it's best to appropriate. i understand yeah, but, but we're here a yeah. special bill was sent to us we, we thankfully it wasn't special session but at least the exhortation we got yesterday were 22 days away from opening that, that that that's a good point okay. vice speaker yeah and we were even thinking your original bill was to take it from 2017 money in october but if you have cash today if there's cash and you're unreserved and it's enough to cover 1.5 for your operate for your operations and it'll cover all the overtime why am i going to have to meet uh with senator Ugin and, and and gpd and dpw separately if there's money there have it all come from there. General fund can't afford any more money. You have cash. Yeah, I mean to be honest, as the uh, you know general manager of GVB as well as the festival chairman, I I have two hats. So uh, the uh, <laughs> overtime uh, for the line agencies in the bill from the governor was to be coming Are from the general fund. Are they having overtime for what purpose? Yeah. The overtime they're claiming that this overtime is the overtime because they're going to have to drive the heads of states around they're going to have to guard the the sites and all kinds of things they're going to have to have fi firemen uh emts at all of the schools to make sure that the that the delegates are okay they're incurring this for FESPAC, or at least that's the allegation in, in that memo that we got DPWs is running it up for FESPAC. It's not summer school. It's FESPAC. Mm. So why can't all of it be paid for from your unreserved? Uh, I'm trying to help. I, I am yeah, trying to find yeah. all the money. I'm not being. I, I yield to the uh, oversight. My oversight chairman. I am trying to be as helpful yeah. as possible. We all of a sudden found because because we had two different ones. If if it was, if I didn't mistakenly read these, thinking they should have been the same thing, thinking that they made a mistake and they used 2016 in one report and 2015 in another. I wouldn't have asked the question, and now I find out that there is 15 money, there is 16 money, and it's actual cash. It's not advanced appropriation from 17. And that's why, uh, that's why, Mr. Vice Speaker, when when the information came to the committee, we decided to substitute the version based on the consideration that we looked that way. And when the actual numbers came to us, we wanted to make sure that the capital improvement projects that were needed. Uh, we're, we're still intact. But, and but and capital improvement projects aside. So based on the funding that was received, I mean the, 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 the amounts that were received, we knew that we can ascertain both. At, but at no, the, but that was from 15. You're using, you're right, we're using the surplus from 2015. There's, there's now 16 money. And she's but we didn't ask for 16, sir. I, yeah. Initially, your initial 252 was 16, right? No, was then for why, surplus then, 15. The the inquiry came in on, and and the, the. But why does the fiscal note from February for the original 252 say that the 
there it's was, from 2016. And that's why when the question was asked, we moved to confirm. When a bill is introduced. No. Look, at the, look at your fiscal note. Right, it said 2016. Yes. When the question was asked, the bill is asking from surplus from 2015. And when we got the fiscal note, we, we, we checked with CORE, and CORE said, uh, so we had to ask again for the right fiscal note. That was submitted to us from the administration. So the question was asked on the floor when we were working so on the So if the bill was for 15, was it sloppy on the part of BBMR and, and, and DOA to send us the unreserved for 16? Or did they, un, did they underestimate, under, uh, under report 15 and type 16 here? Uh, no, Vice Speaker, I, I did mention earlier that you know we're still we're still looking at what happened on the on the on the there was a misread perhaps or a miscommunication on on the figure and I just I corrected myself by saying the figure should have been two point three million dollars and I know you're you're focusing on the on the sixth or the what I reported but I'm, I'm retracting that and I'm saying that the fiscal note prepared yesterday. Which, uh, of 2.3 million as the unreserved balance should have been the same balance when I prepared the fiscal note in February. I know. So, which is the know, reason I, I, why we were confused. Is so because I underreported it. Because the balance. when you submitted yeah. your February note, you have in that column tw FY 2014 hot surplus fund, right? It should have been. It, that was one of the oversights no, on our it, part. And we, we, made, we changed it, but. It you should have been 2015. It, you crossed it out. Right. It should have been 2015 all along. We just reported a, a, a different number that wasn't as accurate as it used to be. Therefore, by doing that, we under we underreported the balance. The balance should have been 2.3. And I'm and I'm stating that for the record because that was that's what happened. Then then you take the reports and on the side there where you had the fiscal year at the at, on the far left. Yes. It should have been 2015. That, that's a couple of oversights we saw, we, we saw later on here. That's why I corrected myself from the onset. We're still talking about 2015 hot surplus fund, and the balance should have been 2.3. It was a misnomer there. The February fiscal note should have also said 2.3. And I'm stating that for the record because it was, a, it was something that we weren't able to, to catch in time. But that's the reality of it. So the February one should be corrected. To yes, say 2015. On the, on the, on the left-hand side. Far left where it says 2016 should have been 2015. All right. And then on, the, on where it was 1.3 on that column to the right side, it should have said 2015 as well. Hot surplus bond. bond. And thereby the, the 2.3 should have replaced the 1.3. And as we worked the, co uh, worked the column down after the 910 million, uh, 910,000 appropriation for the for, for GVB, for the improvements, the balance should have been almost 1.4. And, and it should have been that all along. But again, it, it just, we underreported the balance. And we're making the correction when we're discussing the fiscal note that yes, I just prepared you're, yesterday. You're correcting it because the TAF audit that came out last two weeks ago said the balance was 2.4. No, I'm not correcting that. I'm not, it's not based on that. It's based on discussions with the DOA and they, they have their staff perform the analysis on what's available. Yeah, it, it was, the audit came, I, 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 you know, the reconciliation was focusing on 2015 and so, that's where the 2.3 so million dollar balance is. we have 2.3. 2.3, yes. And the testimony today is that we have, that every month that there is excess, it's put into an unreserved. And so in 2016, how much do we have in unreserved? According to Mrs. Kikigi, we have $1.3 million for FY16, but of which 1.3 of projected expenditures are, are, have, to be, have to be tagged onto that, thereby making what's available in 16 basically zero. She mentioned it, it was a wash. So for 16, it's a wash. So we're only really looking at $2.3 million available today to accommodate Bill 252 All right. did that as substituted. Two point, did that 2.3 take into account the $800,000 appropriation that we made last month? That I don't know. Uh, 
for FY15 uh, for FY16 we did uh, take it into account for FY16 yeah, how about for the 23 is that going to affect the 23 or is the 800 no no secure it, 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 and we'll, we'll still be in the black but it, yes we're still in the black and that if we add yeah if we consider all the appropriations and the 2.3 yeah for FY16 would still be in the black so I didn't find any extra money no I'm sorry <laughs> I if I knew I would be gone <laughs> uh, if I may just ask a point of information on that point we were just talking about 2016 at this point being a wash but then the following statement was we're in the black if we're at a wash, how can we be in a black? Can I just note for the record that the expenditures, and I know I'm supposed to give Lee away for, for both fiscal years, but the bill as stated was for, as substituted, was looking at the surplus for 2015. The questions were asked was what, what is come in to date for 2016 also. So she, was saying that it's a wash uh, just for 16. Just for 16. And, and the problem is, is when these fiscal notes come in is that they're sloppy. They have 2014 and they cross it out. 2014 is on the top of the column and 2016 is on the side when it should have been 2015. How are we supposed to know what we're dealing with? And then I find out that, that this is only going to be operations. It's not going to take into account all the overtime or the DPW request. That's going to have to come from general fund. Oh, no. The bill notes for programming. I, uh, Senator, uh, Majority Leader uh, Respicio, please. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Let's uh, back up here because I was really following the discussion very closely, I was understanding it. Then when the director of BBMR spoke, it just kind of brought us back to whatever the vice speaker was able to unravel over the last um, 35 minutes or so. Director, I wanna help you here. I, I wanna try to walk you through and help you walk back what you just said because when you sign off on these fiscal notes, you're, you know, it's an attestation that it's true and correct, right? And, and then also you guys, um, affirm under oath that the information you're providing is true and correct to the best of your knowledge and that requirement to swear in is a requirement of law and it's not because the legislature doesn't believe the people that are testifying before this body that the law makes it so that it's just a, a routine uh, thing to do. Um, you were sworn in that the information you're giving relative to the financials is true and correct to the best of your knowledge so at least you're not um, you're not, you, you haven't been uh, told your Miranda rights. <laughs> and it is law week, so I just wanna put a plug for the judiciary and what they're celebrating. But, you know, when, when, when Bill 252 was introduced, look at the funding source, it was fiscal year 2015. When you provided the fiscal note dated February 19, 2016, you provided a unreserved fund balance for FY 2016. That's, that's the first um, uh, confusion. But I wanna give you an opportunity to, to tell this body if it's true that the, in FY 2016, the unreserved fund balance was 1.3 million. Was that number correct? Yes, it was correct. Uh, okay, stop there. <laughs> Stop there. Just I'll walk you through this. Okay. I, that's a good answer. It's correct. Okay. It's a good because answer. I'll take it. Thank you, no, Senator. No, 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 because it reflects the audit reports. And, and I was correct yesterday. And I was correct yesterday that the way you read these um, accounts, they're segregated by fiscal year because when you close out the fiscal year, whatever happened for that fiscal year, good or bad, that's, that's the story and that's the snapshot in time, right? And so if ever we ended in a fun deficit, then the legislature has come in and appropriate money, so statutorily you do a JV, a journal voucher, and so you, you reimburse one account for any deficit spending, only to correct those accounting uh, practices. But ultimately, although these accounts are segregated, 
the cash, although it's not to be commingled, it's kind of just all there. Right, so I understand the challenges between BBMR and DOA. So when you provided this fiscal note and you told this legislature that there was a fund balance of 1.3 million, that was for FY16. So director, I, I just want to correct what you said when you apologize for having this er done in error. This fiscal note that you provided the only error was the funding source, but the numbers that you provided is correct, correct? It was for 16, but it should have been. Yeah, uh, uh, Gary, 15. there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so for the record, Madam Chair, when the BBMR signed off to this fiscal note, although the funding source didn't match the funding source in Bill 252, this fiscal note is correct. It's correct in that it was sufficient, ad, uh, funds were adequate to cover the $910,000 appropriation that's, that's uh, pursuant to and 252. It was the 1.3 that, That's why I said I underreported under, under the balance, but the balance was adequate to cover the $910,000 at the time, the first bill. Was 1.3 correct on February the 19th? Yes, it was. So what is the balance today? $2.3 million. Because again, no, 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 for 16, oh, for not si 15. It's still 1.2, right? Yeah, it's, it's still 1.3. It's state, it, huh? It's still the same amount. No, 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 no. We've had <laughs> three banner two. months. February 19th only included January, that one February month. I mean, that one month. GVB reported February, the best February ever in 50 years. Okay, mention. <laughs> so there should be an excess. And they're now reporting March as, as a banner month. So what is the balance today? Okay, um, on, February the th on February the 19th, the this, this 2016 amount, was, you're claiming on February the 19th, that was uh, 1.3. Yeah, like I said, Senator, for FY16, if we're looking at 16 only, we, we, we had a 1.3 million excess revenues, and we actually paid out 1.3. That's why I said it's a wash. So the, the, the uh, on reserve still remains at 2.3. You paid out 1.3 uh, for, for reserved, no, out of unreserved the, funds, or you paid out 1.3 from regular TAF? From regular. Uh, as appropriations. So why are you washing out the unreserved? Um, no, I'm just saying the net surplus for FY16, it, there's no, it, it, it breaks even. So we, there's nothing to add to from the 2.3 million. There's nothing on 16 to add to it. So we're still back to 2.3 million. Okay, so now yeah. the two of you just undermined his because now there's nothing in 2016. Yeah, but the but it doesn't matter to me because the bill appropriates from 2016. So, what what I'm also saying is that you don't necessarily add these two numbers and say this is my fund balance. You've got to read this in separate fiscal years and just got to wrap. We got to wrap our minds that this is what happened for that fiscal year and for this is so what happened in 2016, and then what happened in 2015. It should be our focus right now, and so. In 2015, you submitted a fiscal note, a revised fiscal note, because the governor did uh, request the legislature to introduce a bill to appropriate 1.5 million to host the Festival of the Pacific. And that's when we had a revised fiscal note reflecting the, the correct uh, funding source. So, Director, I just wanna give you the latitude and the opportunity to, again, clarify that you, you weren't your numbers were not incorrect, that your numbers were correct, but the funding source was not the same funding source that was contained in Senator Barnes's original bill. Thank you, uh, Senator. I, I appreciate that observation. Thank you. You know why I do that, um, Madam Chairs? Because every bill that's gonna be appropriating money that we, every bill we get a fiscal note from, I just don't want to, have these, you know, our colleagues look at it and say that I wonder if this is even 
correct or not. So now we know that it was the funding source, but the number you represented is accurate. And you, you take those things very seriously. And when there's no money, there's no money. But when there is money, you do um, indicate that to us. There's, there's reference, Nate, you, you're also um, chairman your other capacity for the FESPAC. So you referenced that the governor uh, did submit a bill for um, overtime. As far as I know, there was only one bill that the governor submitted to the legislature, and that's to appropriate 1.5 million, and it, it's to, to host Fest back in. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, sp uh, Senator. I, yeah, I was I was incorrect. It was only for the logistics side of it, not not for the overtime. So there was that that bill didn't include uh, overtime that the governor submitted. So okay, because I had to go back and look at the bill, and there was yeah. only one appropriation, and that's 1.5. You're, you're correct. I was okay. incorrect earlier. In it's okay. It. And then I, it was reduced to 1.3 million because of the funding source, and we had to match. Um, yeah. Correct, correct, sir. Thank you. But, you know, I hope that we can agree that there's money for uh, to accommodate this bill, but I also hope, Madam Chair, that we can agree as a body that We've always knew that FESPAC was going to cost $13 million. This committee, I believe, has been above and beyond transparent, so much so that the public auditor, the attorney general, they're monitoring every transaction that this um, organization is going through. Not only did we know that FESPAC was going to cost $13 million, we passed the statute that provided a council and identified the membership that that the, for the FESPAC coordinating council and who those members are and uh, what the goal is for the FESPAC and, and gave the governor this um, tremendous responsibility to be able to pull this off. So we knew that it was gonna cost 13 million. We knew that the governor is gonna do this by statute because we did the council. And now that the bills are coming in, I wanna make sure that we're also, we continue to be a partner to make sure that the governor has the authority and the appropriation and the wherewithal to make good on the commitment that we knew from the very beginning that FESPAC was going to cost uh, this this much money. And you know, the um, there were some hiccups along the way, and I rarely like to look back, but I only like to look back if I could, if looking back points out that something good came as a result of looking back. And, and when the committee uh, talked about the procurement issue, you know, I I very, uh, to the point, raised it. I was very, very matter of fact that, that we have to ask the Attorney General to review whether or not the event specialist that was on contract is able to make the procurement upwards of $4.2 million. And there was a lot of you know, back and forth, and, and, and the council believed that the event specialist was able to do it. Mr. Cameron believed that he was able to do it because that's what he was told, that he was able to do it. And I'm grateful that the council agreed to at least check with the attorney general. And we were like 69 days out, so we still had some time to clarify these things. And so the council agreed that they would get guidance, legal guidance from the attorney general. And whatever the attorney general um, said at that point was what the council was gonna follow. And so the AG came back and said that you cannot spend $4.2 million through this event specialist, but you can spend 800,000 because that was the amount that was identified at the time the contract was signed. And you were really good, um, uh, Nate, about taking it back to GVB and presenting this to your board and following through with the Attorney General's recommendation that the remaining balance to uh, procurement run through the Guam Visitors Bureau. So you know, I, it's not like we just keep throwing money at FESPAC and saying, here, this is what you have to do. It, we're, we're providing all the support that the FESPAC Council needs, but there also is checks and balances every step of the way. And so I appreciate the, um, uh, the call for the, you know, the public to be aware of what's going on, but this appropriation is still consistent with the amount that we said publicly was always gonna be with respect to how much FESPAC was gonna cost. And so everything is still within that amount, and like you said, you fell short for whatever reason of the cash donations, and so this balance represents that amount. Does the 13 million include the overtime for DPW, GFD, and GPD? Uh, 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 Vice Speaker, that wasn't in the original uh, budget that was passed in 2013 by the organizing committee for those agencies, but uh, we'll continue to work with 
uh, the front office and those branches to see what, what we can do to So though we keep talking areas. about the 13 million and staying within it, it does not include the overtime for those three. To, to my knowledge, I wasn't at the committee at that time, but reviewing the budget that was passed and the breakdown, I didn't, I didn't see those items. But in it there. is part of the operation of FESPAL. Uh, and, and just those are the only three that I know that have come to me yeah. so far. Government work is in kind. Is yeah. Sodexo or whoever's going to do the feeding, is that completely covered under the 13? Yeah, yes, all, all the feeding of uh, the delegates will be covered under uh, the, the monies that we're receiving for logistics and operations. So I'll not, we'll, the Committee on Appropriations will not be receiving a separate request for an, any additional amounts to pay to for feeding? Uh, that, that's correct, sir, yes. Will the Committee on Appropriations be receiving any requests for additional amounts to GDOE for the maintenance of their schools during this two-week period? Uh, within the logistics, we're, we're building in the maintenance and uh, upkeep of the schools during the festival, so no. Are there any other costs of FESPAC that the original committee did not anticipate that you're, you're finding that we're going to have to find besides GFD, GPD, DPW, Will the DOC guards have to be paid overtime for? Uh, no, the, the service they're providing is, um, is on their off time. They're, they're volunteering, so no, no, sir. So those are the three, the three you mentioned are the three that I'm aware of that are outside of this, but there's no other ones to my knowledge. But their off time has resulted, even when they were still working at DOC and were not doing, I mean, were doing their DOC responsibilities. We are running up a huge overtime. In fact, there's going to be a huge overtime payment this Friday. Be because so of uh, now that there's even, Now that there's even 10 less up there, or whatever number that have been assigned down, has the DOC overtime increased because they needed to guard all, all the 700 prisoners up there? And is that going to be a completely separate bill that we're going to receive? As I understand it, security is going to include the um, probation and marshals from the court. Am I going to receive a separate bill from, from the court for the overtime for their marshals and, and probation officers if they provide security? Yeah the, yeah, the only three I was aware of are those three that were um, the G, GFD, GPD, and the DPW. I'm, I, I wasn't aware of DOC or the court probation. But I, I, I mean, we can, I can check, but I haven't, I haven't heard that. Are there any other expenses that you're finding out now that aren't covered that we should know about? Uh, no, sir. <coughs> Madam Chair, I was also going to ask, um, what are the, what's the plan to accommodate the overtime needs for? For DPW, for the bus drivers, for GPD, for DOC. Um, majority Sorry, the fire department. Fire department, GPD, and uh, I was when when I first came into the uh, committee, based on the discipline uh, uh, through law, um, we were told when the thirteen million dollar budget was given, the seven million was supposed to be through in-kind support, five million from the government, and this legislature has worked really hard to making sure that those, and previous legislatures, to make sure that those appropriations were there. Uh, the chair was right when we said that the two million was supposed to come from LADI sponsorships that we have worked so hard on and, and working the different levels of sponsorships. Um, part of that 13 million was to include the, the in-kind support from the government because this is a Team Guam government uh, hosting. And uh, when the programming, when the program, the coordinating committee got together, there were the dis different disciplines uh, from the artisans, from programming, literary arts, visual arts, dance, flora, 
those were all the different disciplines. Those are part of programming. And when those guys were going through those budgets, those those committees had to go back and scrub because they took the logistics portion out to give it to the government to run. And based on the fundings that we had received, the cash and, and, and the donations from the business community, the rest was supposed to be supported from the government in-kind work. So the list that the government agencies are giving to the coordinating committee, which is supposed to be reported, was for all the man hours that were needed and to work this because it's a government hosting. And that the programming, the artisans, and the 1% set aside that was set was to go to the delegates, the, uh, the, the artisans that are presenting at the festival. So that was the interpretation and that was the process that we did. I will note that when the coordinating committee had made changes when we came on board, that there were some uh, administrative changes and there was an, a festival director that was added. And that's where we're at. And since we're not being asked to appropriate money or give an authorization for overtime, it's still 13 million, within the $13 million plus the in-kind, which was gonna come from the organic uh, resources of the, the government. So, that was the interpretation. So we're still with FESPAC is still within the thirteen million dollars plus all the other in kind services that the government departments and agencies are providing. That's my interpretation. Until such time we're asked to appropriate money for overtime, then we would have exceeded the thirteen million dollars. That's my interpretation, Majority Leader. And I just want to make it clear that the chairman of oversight of of GPD and GFD did receive a request from the chief of police. And I told him to send it back down to Adeloup and tell it to come back through Adeloup, that it shouldn't come directly from the chief to the chairman to my committee. It should come, it should go up the ladder through Nate it should come and through, through the governor and then come over to the speaker, not this back door and say, we need 2.3. How much was the that request? 2.1? 1.2. Yes, the, the, the request based on the coordinating council committee that was created, that the requests for all the logistical portions that the administration was going to take over was to be reported to the coordinating committee for ratification working with the festival director then coming so that the and so I'm not the being logistics. obstructive I'm just trying I'm hoping that there is real cash real yes. cash not advanced appropriations from 2017 and if you want to amend this to say there they can spend any of their unreserved fund to pay for it then okay that's all I'm trying to get to I'm not trying to jump in the way I'm just trying to say if there's this extra money that's there, yeah. and he's the chairman of the event, and GBB wants to make Guam shine, then take authority to spend everything, including paying for the overtime, which is a FESPAC operation cost. And I appreciate this uh, discussion because I just, as a member of this body, I don't believe that we can be called in at the 11th hour to say, you know, after we get through this hurdle, hopefully we'll get through this hurdle, but I don't want to be called back in and say that, Speaker, please call an emergency session because you have to authorize for overtime payment. So, Madam Chair, could we get some resolution at the same time we're trying to resolve this issue? Can we get some finality from, from the front office as to how they plan to handle the no. outstanding overtime? Because at this point, there's been no request, and I honestly, I thought that when the governor requested this bill to be introduced, I was of the understanding since the, the last FESPAC meeting, we, were, we saw all these um, uh, budgets for overtime that was not even addressed yet, and we thought that the governor was gonna exercise his transfer authority, and so when this 
request for $1.5 million appropriation came in, not, not saying what it was to be used for, only to say that it's to host FESPAC, I thought that it was just it was to cover the overtime because that was the issue du jour. That was the hot button item. And so can we get some finality as to what the administration plans to do with the overtime? Because once we close this this chapter, I I don't think we can keep coming back. If we have to be called back into session, it's very hard to articulate the narrative that Guam's ready for FESPAC. Thank you. And again, thank, thank you, thank you. Mr. Majority Leader. Again, it would be for the programming and hosting. Um, do you have any thoughts to that? Then yes. Can we get I, them? I, I, then, said, so can we there get? There was an inquiry said. I'm then, sorry, Madam Speaker. So can, we're still finally, addressing the majority can we get leader. for the record from the chairman of FESPAC that That's, the legislature will not be asked to address the uh, outstanding overtime issue? Can we get that statement from you for the record, if you're prepared to state that? Um, Yes, I, I, th I, no, I, I appreciate the vice speaker and uh, Senator Respicio, you know, really supporting the festival and wanting to take care of those needs. Um, I, I think we just have to do our homework and the research to see. I also want to make sure that the funds are there. Uh, and, and if they are, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm sure the, we'll bring that up to the festival director uh, and the governor's office to see if that's uh, the way to move forward and that's the way they want to go as far as uh, funding those, those requests. But so when so when we rise from this committee the whole, yeah. and this bill is disposed of, and if this bill passes and governor signs it, where this legislature will not be asked anything else regarding FESPAC. And it's important that it's important that we address the 800 pound gorilla in the room, yeah. because if next week comes around and there there's going to be a request to appropriate for overtime then we're gonna have to go through all this whole process again and it's it's painful. It's not only painful for you, it's and the others that are that have joined you, but it's also painful for us as members of the legislature because the all the community he's, is yeah. hearing is we're ready and then there's all these um, issues that need to be addressed. So Yeah, I, I hundred percent agree with you and uh, yeah and, and appreciate your support and, and, and I think you're on the right track and um, from would, my you be able, would you be able to confirm from the from the FESPAC director from Rose Ramsey if the governor needs authorization from from the General Appropriations Act of this current fiscal year to yeah. per, to provide for overtime? I think that's what the vice speaker is asking. Also, if he if he yeah, needs yeah, to we can we can I can uh, meet with them and and get advice on that and how to proceed and get back with an answer. I, I don't like before we rise from this committee the whole, but thank you, Madam yeah. Chair. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and address uh, Speaker Wanpat, then Senator Tommy. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Is your mic, is, is can your you hear mic me? on? Can you hear me? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Can you, can you guys hear me? Okay, real good. Uh, I wanna go back to the fiscal note. On the, for the 2015 on reserve fund balance. It's $2.3 million. And then if you look at less appropriation, which will be for Bill 252 of $2,210,000, there's a balance then of 90,000. And in the discussion of uh, Bill 252, the original bill, there was the concern uh, by uh, one of our colleagues here that just the project number two, I mean number, no, not A, that reversed. We didn't put that. Well, anyway, the projects um, that are listed A to E is that it would not, the amount of $910,000 would be insufficient and that we may not be able to uh, proceed, start with one, I mean A, B, C, C would apparently be the largest. So knowing then that there is that 90,000 less, uh, I wanna verify first of all that's 90,000 is the balance and that then can be appropriated so that maybe to increase 
the dollar amount of 910,000 to 1 million instead for these uh, safety related projects and I know that even the 1 million would still be insufficient. Do you have any objections to that at all? Uh, d uh, definitely no objection, uh, Madam Speaker. Um, that would be very helpful in us to even do more work uh, for those uh, critical safety projects, so none, none from me. Okay, so, and I don't know whether this will be the appropriate time to do this, uh, to solicit, of course, uh, comments, but, and if we're gonna do this after you leave, then maybe, but that will be the intention then, is to add that $90,000 to increase the amount from 910 to $1 million then to be able to provide for projects A to E. Yeah. Are there any objections to my colleagues here at all? No objections, so that was my motion, is to take the balance of the 90,000 and add it on to the $910,000 to make it 1 million then instead for projects A to E on the bill. Anybody wish to speak to the amendment by speaker to increase the amount to million? Um. Uh, I see Senator Espadon, then Senator Blas. Um, I understand what the motion is, and that's basically spend everything we got at this point. And I have reservations every time we do that, because it seems to me every time we find a penny, we're going to spend it. And as was testified earlier, um, let's see, there's a 2015, and, and I, I just need to ask Ms. Uh, uh, Kakiyi then, that this is from the 2015, are there any more encumbrances uh, from the 2015 that could potentially take away that $90,000 surplus that we're showing now? No, I don't foresee any. So in essence, if we go down this road, we will bring the 2015 account down to zero. That's correct. Now, if in 2016, even though we may be showing a surplus at this point, and we m hit a few rough spots along the way, typically, if there's not enough uh, money within the 2016 funds, then is, am I correct to assume that that is when then you look to uh, a prior year account to see if there's any money there to make up for the difference? Is that how that works? Uh, yes, sir, you, you are correct. We will look back at the accounts, appropriations that are not being utilized, and then um, we'll bring it up to the governor's office and let them know that perhaps they don't need the remainder of their funding. So we just do, it's like a modification. Right, but the point is that you will then look to previous accounts or uh, previous yes. year's accounts. Yes, sir. Yes, and Senator. Going back to, to what was said earlier then in terms of 2014, uh, um, gosh, I think I wrote it down, but I'm not sure. Can you just tell me for certain, does that uh, 2014 uh, uh, account Specifically, not the cumulative, but the 2014 account, does that have anything left in it? Uh, or is that zeroed out also? Uh, the 2014, um, we brought it over to 2015. So it's, it's cumulative. It's included in the 2.3. So l then let me ask you this. How many years do you let go by? Because I was under the stand, and again, I'm just learning this for, I mean, I've been here for I don't know how many years, or at least involved and I'm still learning new stuff on how we do government accounting. And how long, if 2014 passed already, you keep, you just, or even 2013 or any years prior to 2015, you just roll it in to the last fiscal year account? We, the accounts that we roll over depends on the language of the law. Uh, for some, like for the budget law, there's certain agencies that are authorized carryover. So um, with that, we will allow at least 
we try to, what we do is we make that uh, judgment call and we, we terminate it within two years. But for this particular account, that's what you do here by uh, law, I would imagine. For, for this particular, because you're talking about the GMHA SCAT CAN, SCAT CAN rather, machine. The, so it depends on what the program um, is uh, and whether or not the, it's still needed. Because I see uh, in the past uh, certain programs that for some reason they were canceled, so therefore the appropriation wasn't needed. So um, to answer your question, if it comes to a point where we, we feel that we're going to track a deficit, then we will inform um, governor's office and say, hey, you know, we need to look at prior year accounts and make a decision to, um, to terminate it, you know, because right now it doesn't look like the, the mayor's council, for example, needs, because they're always given carryover authority. And, <laughs> so. you know, we, and they're not really spending their money as, Okay. within the fiscal year, so we will make, I'll, I'll make that call, I said, do not carry anything over, older than um, 2013. Okay, so you, so. Uh, somebody at DOA makes the call. Yes, when, yes. When to roll over. So in this situation, yeah. when we're talking 2014, anything that may have been in there was then rolled in to 2015, and right. that was a call made at DOA. That's right. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And so now we're saying that, okay, in 2015, we go through this fund and we have 90,000. But then when you start talking about the 2016 funds, right, mm -hmm. when you came down to a wash, uh, that means that 2016 has nothing in it because you have some encumbrances against it. Is correct. That, is that Co correct? Correct. And we will continue to monitor closely. Right. Uh, so yes. if... If there is a hiccup anywhere along the lines where we do not uh, have anything to put in that fund, then that will be a zero. And if we have any further encumbrances, then uh, there's nothing to back it up. That's right. Um, with all due respect, I, I have, I always, I've always had a problem with trying with finding money and then figuring out how to spend every single penny of it, Madam Speaker. I mean, and I and I understand your zeal for adding on that amount right now. But present you know, the the extra ninety thousand, it seems prudent to me, uh, and I'll speak to the chair, Madam Chair, that perhaps we should. I mean, as little as it is, but it's still significant. The ninety thousand dollars perhaps should stay in there because we don't know. <laughs> what other, um, since we're at zero right now, what other expenditures might come up that this extra $90,000 might be used for. So I, you know, the question that was posed, does anybody have any problems with it? I do have a problem with using that extra $90,000 and folding it in to the present bill. So I guess I will state that in the form of an objection. An objection. So there is a motion on the floor on the WAMPAT Yes, ma'am. It's a one pad amendment. There is an objection. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. Can she make it in a motion form? Yes, uh, Senator Frank Voss. Yeah. Anybody else on the amendment? I do apologize. Anybody else? Uh, Tom? Senator Tom, I'm sorry. Okay. Senator Frank Voss. Th thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, And maybe this is a question to both the mover of the suggestion and to the panel there. Um, this additional $90,000, where are we talking about where are we getting it from? Which year? 2015. Uh, the 2015. Surplus fund, yeah, 2015. Fiscal year 2015. Okay. And, Joey, Mr. Cowell, Sir. am I correct to say that the 2015, according to what you said, has a fund balance of how much? 2.3 million. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, Madam Chair, I 
I have to agree with the, with the retiring speaker um, on his concern, because I have the same concern. As much as I believe that it could go and it will go, you know, to um, improving, um, I guess, the safety in Tumon. You just got to be very mindful, very careful that the discussion here is actually then the amounts necessary for FESPAC. And I think that prior to the proposition of taking the 90,000, moving, putting $90,000 more into the capital improvements, there was a request, and I'm still worried, we're still waiting for it, on what additional expenditures there are going to be for FESPAC so that we're not called back in, you know, at 11.53 and scrambling to find additional funding for something that we should have dealt with today. So, I too have to express an objection to the amendment, but Madam Speaker, I have to do this with a caveat that we're not done with the conversation and the discussion of what's necessary for FESPAC. Once we're done with that, and I think then, then I'm open to the discussion on that further. Well, we were waiting, because we're waiting for the information. And uh, from my understanding, Mr. DeKnight was going to get back with the, with, the, with the chairperson, right, or the director, to be able to find out what those additional. Um, so that's where I'm at with, with that, Madam, Madam Chair. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Brett Mercredi, you're recognized. Thank you, Senator Bloss. Senator Brett. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, for Mr. Calvo, Kakigi, and Nate, thanks for being here. Um, I know it's a tough task we have ahead of us, but we're going to have to get there together, obviously. I just want to go back to the, to the original cost and then move kind of forward to where we are today. We projected that the entire FEST pack would cost $13 million. Is that, is that what happened in the beginning? Yes, that was the budget passed in uh, July 2013 okay. by the organizing committee. Okay, so, so within that $13 million, as we got closer to the, the actual date of, of 22 days from now, mm -hmm. have we seen costs rise above $13 million? Uh, no, no, sir, actually it's been the opposite. We've been trying to cut as much cost as possible especially with the current uh, cash uh, situation. So we're, so we're actually cutting from the $13 million. Uh -huh. Are Correct. we cutting services? Are we, are we well, we're, we're trying to find, for example, in the original $13 million, they were going to have the delegates stay at hotels. Okay. So that was a quite a, you know, millions and millions of dollars of expenses. So we were able to house them in the schools. And so we're trying to find uh, savings everywhere we can and be as uh, cost effective as possible. So. Uh, I, I think when all is said and done, we, we will need the, about $7 million cash, and in kind, we'll probably have about a million uh, in in kind, so the total about $8 million to $9 million, uh, so qu quite a bit less than the original 13. Okay, so so in, in, in real simple round number terms, we projected a $13 million expenditure or a cost. Correct. Her. Out of that $13 million, we figured we could save from housing uh, uh, cuts, we could save $2 million. Uh, 
No, 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 just a, just a main bill. Oh. I'm asking you I'm sorry, we're on an amendment, Senator Brent. Oh, <laughs> On the main bill, I do apologize. Senator Morrison, on the amendment? On the amendment or on the main? Okay, on the main. So we're still at the motion. There was a Senator Tom at, on the main. So we have Tommy, Tommy, Tom and on the main. But we are on the amendment right now. On the amendment, on the main. Okay, we do have a motion on the floor. There were concerns, there was an objection. So would you, do you wish to close? Yes, Madam Chair, I, I, and I appreciate, of course, uh, my, the two previous uh, speakers who spoke uh, in opposition to the amendment. I understand where they're coming from as well, uh, because, and, and I do have questions later on while I still have the floor, but I decided to do this first, primarily because in the original bill, when we were discussing exactly what it is that we needed to do uh, to make sure that we provide in safety improvements, in areas starting from, you know, JFK with the uh, the crosswalk, uh, the street lights, and and more, and, and just as important, equally important, and that's where my question would be to uh, Mr. Denate in terms when we were talking about street lights. I mean, just looking at these five projects, I mean, just street lights alone. What do you estimate that the cost will be for that? And that's number three in the order of priority here. Yeah, th thank you, um, Madam Speaker. So I'm sure everyone's been down to Tumon and, um, you know, as of now, we about 50% of the street lights are, are not functioning. Uh, I've had calls from actually members of this body. Uh, in fact, uh, Senator Rodriguez just contacted me uh, just a few months ago to ask me about the street lights. And it's a project that GVB, of course, um, is very aware of and has been working on. Uh, if, if, if I may, I'll just give a little bit of the background. Um, we started fixing the lights uh, two years ago and we replaced one third of the light fixtures, which had been done in about end of the 90s during phase one, phase two redevelopment of Tumon. Um, but it, they haven't been repaired since then. So many of them were going out. So we replaced about one third of them with, uh, you know, the housing, those, those decorative lights with LED lights. Um, after the last, last year's rainy season, we found that many of the lights were still going out. And what was happening, the lights that weren't fixed were getting uh, uh, flooded with water and then it would short out the whole row of lights, about 15 to 20 lights. Anyway, so we went and did a very extensive uh, survey of the lights with an electrician, um, uh, electrical engineering company. And so they tested, there's 21 different sets of circuits uh, down there in Tumon, and then you'll see these like silver boxes, and those are the switches for the actual light fixtures. So there's 21 of those. So they did a very extensive survey. What they found is there's about, they estimated about $2 million worth of work that needs to be done to fix the street lights. So the Bureau, um, through uh, uh, Senator Barnes and this body, was given a capital improvement budget um, uh, last year and we were planning to use that for the lights so but that budget came up short we have about 900,000 in that capital improvement budgets that's that's going to go to the street lights uh, in Tumon and that's why we work with uh, Senator Barnes to get this uh, extra money here so we can go ahead and do the project and do it right because the problem is is when you kind of piecemeal the lights like we did before uh, the the one light you know like a Christmas light one light goes out and shorts out the whole bunch. And why this is so important is that there's, uh, it's not really for the tourists, it's for the local residents. So every day after work, we have thousands of people coming down, uh, ex doing their exercise in Tumon, uh, using Ipa Beach and then walking down and, and exercising. And we've got several reports from hotels. Uh, I just got a letter from PIC about um, people almost getting hit right in front of the property. And then, of course, for the visitors, when there's no lights, we just installed a camera system that we had donated by Docomo Pacific. But with the lights don't work, then the cameras are, are useless. And the cameras also work off the power on the lights. So we have several cameras that are there, but they, at night they go off because the lights, aren't, the lights don't turn on, right? So they don't work. Uh, anyway, that's, so that, that's, the, that's the issue. Also, um, speaking with Senator Ada, you know, the JFK crosswalk there's not enough lighting there as well. And also the road 
markers are, are kind of fading. So we want to do some work in that area as well. So um, the additional funds, we had uh, requested more than the 910 um, to, to do this project and also to help with the JFK. So the additional funds would be very, very helpful to, to do more safety measures, in, in, in especially in that JFK area, and then take care of all the lights in, in San Vittorio. So we really appreciate this body uh, putting public safety first and you know it's you know everyone sometimes says oh it's just for the tourists but for me it's really for the local residents there's so many people down there running and and exercising after work and then all the people that work in Tumon you know we have thousands of employees that go to go to work every day and um, the, the last one is also we just had the Guam International Marathon and, and to be quite frank it's a little bit embarrassing we start right in front of GVB and it starts at three in the morning and they run down and there's no, I mean, right in front of uh, vice speaker's condo, there's no lights, you know, on that whole stretch. And it's very dark because there's no property right there. Um, so, you know, I think these, these safety measures are, are very important now. And, and, um, and I'm a little bit uh, uh, to Senator Blazes because I have the two hats, the FESPAC chairman and the GVB uh, GM. But, you know, for me, this public safety is very important, right? If if anything happens to anyone, that 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 to me comes first, and it's a project that we've been uh, kind of a little bit out of the scope of what GVB does, but we really want to get this done for the safety of of every of all our community. So, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and thank you very much for you know giving us uh, information in terms of at least a portion uh, of this bill or majority of this bill, really. I will address exactly the, the safety issue. And I understand where my colleagues are coming from. Yeah, good, and I know point. we're going to be waiting for additional information from a question asked uh, earlier about um, you know, the, the, ad, any additional cost uh, in particular uh, for the overtime. And that I know 90,000 uh, is not going to be enough definitely to address, let's say, the overtime itself. Correct. Uh, but, you know, but I just want to make this a statement that in, in the request of my two colleagues here for me to withdraw uh, this motion now until we get the information, uh, seeing where we're at, at least for the festival. But if the amount, of course, is just totally inadequate, the 90,000, then I will proffer that same amendment uh, later then too address uh, the safety issues because at least from what we're hearing you say is just the street lights itself is about nine hundred and ten thousand dollars but there are other projects that are here that i'm sure that the ninety thousand would be able to you know go a long ways in providing uh, the safety so with that then madam chair is that i will then and i'm sure there won't be any objections to make that withdrawal of that uh, motion and I'll do it at a later time. Just so that it, it doesn't get caught up in the rules and stuff, we want to make sure that the speaker has the opportunity to bring back that same motion. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to my colleagues as well. Uh, I, I do have other uh, questions that I'm concerned about. Um, uh, yes. Uh, is that at least I've been hearing, and I know there's a difference between the first committee and the second committee, and we're not going to beat up anybody in this case, uh, but I'm sure that the second committee has uh, agreed to accept the budgets of each of the different disciplines uh, when they put in their request to be successful in you know uh, providing whether it's the the wares supplies materials performances demonstrations and what have you and because of the amounts that you're giving us has there been a reduction in the different disciplines in their budget from the original request and that what was approved uh, yeah, Madam Speaker, there, there hasn't been a reduction on the, so that's what it's called the programming and the yes. committee had approved uh, a little over 700,000 for the programming. 
of a fest pack and there wasn't a reduction in the budget but just in my talks with everyone from logistics to the to the programming I, i'm just very frank with we can't spend more money that we don't have so i've just been informing them and being very transparent that this is the current situation that this event is uh, not funded to the level uh, of that we needed to, to it needed it to be so I, I i haven't cut anyone's budget um I, but i was very frank with you know Th yeah. This is the current financial situation but with with they had, had requested and what was yeah. approved, that that's of course their ceiling. Co correct, and uh, in fact, I've been working uh, extensively with Kaha and and the different programming and, and with programming and uh, Monica Guzman about you know trying to actually help the programming chairs to get the three quotes that they need to get the. The, uh, the needs that they need, uh, that they need to be provided because, you know, as, as of uh, March, uh, a lot of them mentioned that they haven't been able to uh, get all the paperwork they need. So I have my staff at GBB also working with Kaha because, you know, we, we want to make sure that we take care of our, our uh, different programming needs. Okay. The, you had mentioned earlier, of course, aside from uh, direct appropriations from the government, then, of course, the in-kind through sponsorships. But then there's a third part that you've also have been, uh, just for FESPAC, is the 1% from the arts that goes to FESPAC. I understand, and I'm, um, maybe and this is something not for legislation, but I think in your capacity is not just the chair, but more importantly to work with Gita, because the fact that they have actually given us several QCs and I'm not sure, but I'm encouraging that you go back to those companies who have received QCs and collect from those which is, you know, of course, haven't paid prior to uh, this whole uh, discussion on FESPAC. So that yeah. will be a suggestion to help you recoup some of the monies that you're going to need. Yeah, great, great point, um, Madam Speaker. And uh, yeah, also thank you to Senator Barnes for, for that legislation for the 1% of the arts. And we have been very aggressively going after the 1%. Uh, as, of, as, of Mar as of this March report, we had 85,000 collected from the 1% of the arts. But since this report, we had the 100,000 from the GRMC um, that, that was given two weeks ago. And just yesterday, um, we got one, uh, 100,000 from Ken Corporation. Um, and in fact, the Ken Corporation working with Gita because they really didn't have to start paying for the 1%, uh, but they, being a good corporate citizen, we, we negotiated with them and they gave this actually early to help with FESPAC. So yeah, we have been very aggressive. And so that's another uh, 200,000 that has been raised, um, you know, thanks to, to uh, the finance chair of FESPAC, Senator Barnes, as well as uh, uh, everyone on the organizing committee really trying to go out there and be aggressive with fundraising efforts. Uh, we did announce that Black Construction donated 40 vendor huts at a cost of about 160,000 in kind. So we're, we're trying to be as um, cost effective and trying to find uh, any way we can save money. And if that's an in kind donation that offsets, offsets an expense, it's as good as cash mm -hmm. at this point. So um, yeah, we're, we'll continue to do that as we get closer. Um, the uh, shortfall and, and why then there's a need for this additional uh, money, 1.5 million. Are we covering then for the shortfall that normally what was addressed, that should have been addressed by the sponsorship? That, that's correct, Madam Chair. So now the government's gonna have to bear more of the cost then and not be able then to get the, uh, the different sponsors to take care of some of these operations? Uh, that, that's, that's, that's correct. So I think at the end we'll, we'll probably raise about five, you know, 500,000 in, in cash um, donations and sponsorship and, and then the government would make up the, the shortfall between the, so on the total, two million was projected for sponsorships and, and fundraising efforts and um, I think at the end it'll be about 500,000 collected in that on, on that side, and then 1.5 would be the um, government's contribution, and that's the bill for you today. 1.3, yeah. In, in um, one of the meetings for FESPAC, when this was brought up, the fact that there'll be this shortfall for 
uh, in, for operations, but also shortfall for uh, overtime. And the suggestion originally by you know, several of us from the legislature basically um, instructed the committee to talk to the governor to use his transfer authority first. Now, my understanding then is that, you know, that apparently wasn't something that the government is going with, and now there is this request. The other suggestion was an authorization uh, in the budget now that you're trying to uh, bring the information back to authorize now the governor to use within the budget, you know, the monies then to be able to address some of these, so, oh, the extra monies that you're going to need, such as, let's say, overtime or supplies. Is um, in your conversation uh, with the governor, were you able then to convince the governor that maybe within his own transfer authority that he could do that? And that the next thing, of course, is another authorization from the legislature, then maybe beyond that, to be able then to, within the budget, is to tap some of the monies. Um, yeah, I, I, and I, I think that's a great question. Um, I'd like to get further, you know, I haven't really asked that specific question to them. So I think, I think that was what the body was waiting for. So let me, maybe I can get you a more specific answer on, on those questions and then okay. get back to you. And, and, and the reason why I had asked yeah. that question specifically to overtime, and I know it's not every department and agencies, but you know, the legislature has been very supportive of, uh, you know, public private, you know, partnerships and there are other services that are being provided in the, uh, you know, private sector that could augment some of the things that we do in the government, but not specific, of course, to only government projects, but that the cost would actually be really uh, one third or one fourth the cost of what the government would do in some of these uh, requests for over time. And I hope that, you know, with the authorization of GVB and yourself as the chair for FESPAC, that some of those decisions can probably be made uh, to find, of course, ways that, you know, it's not going to end up now again an additional $1.2 million to request from the government that you could very well actually reduce by taking into consideration some of those uh, partnerships uh, that you know either your agency or others you know have had with the government yeah, that, that's a that's a that's a great point so I'll, I'll take that under consideration and and bring that up and and the last thing that I, I just wanted to to really make sure is that um, we're using of course all of our at least six of our schools right or eight, eight schools eight madam. schools now okay so eight schools then, and I know that the schools have been concerned about uh, supplies and materials that you know are going to be used by, hopefully not by the school supplies, but rather that through the sponsorship, because one of the, the, the idea behind the sponsorship is not just cash to be given, but actually supplies and materials. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, that, and I'm hoping then that with these sponsors, that then those supplies can actually then, uh, that you're going to uh, procure from these, or they're gonna be donated by these uh, sponsors, that it would be then to address, of course, the supplies for the schools, you know, and the, and the maintenance yeah. uh, of the schools as well. Yeah, that's correct, so we have uh, uh, Ambrose and Kimberly Clark donating some of their sponsorship, is one third of their sponsorship is donations and cleaning supplies and paper towels and so forth and uh, we also have uh, Pepsi doing the water so they'll donate the water and so yeah we're working with our with our in-kind sponsors and like I said if they provide um, something like cleaning supplies and we don't have to pay for it it's as good as uh, cash to us at this point so we're being very aggressive and um, you know trying trying to gather as much uh, sponsorship or in-kind or otherwise as po or cash as, po as, as possible um, so, so we're, con we're continu uh, continuing that work, working with uh, uh, Senator Barnes and, and, you know, the entire organizing committee is out there trying to, um, I don't want to use the word beg, but ask, ask as much as possible. And then also just trying to negotiate, you know, every, 
every expense trying to get the best deal as possible. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And, uh, Thank the you, uh, Speaker Wampat. Uh, I do have uh, several other of my colleagues who want to speak. I have Brad McCready, Tommy Morrison, Tom Adams, and Frank Ogden. Senator McCready. Thank you, uh, and I'll try and make this as quick as possible uh, after hearing that, that list. Back to the 13 million, and then we'll go in between and get to the current date. Out of the 13 million, you save uh, on the housing reduction approximately $2 million, Nate? Uh, actually, Senator, you know, in the, in the, um, I have the, um, the 2013 kind of breakout. Okay. They, they, they had it almost, uh, at that time, it was 8.4 in lodging for delegations. So I think they had them staying at hotels. So you can minus 8.4 million from the 13 right off the top? Was that, um, was that the, was, but, but, we, but we do incur uh, costs with using the schools that we have now because now we have to provide bedding, okay. uh, lodging. I, 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 can't, I don't have the exact so number, but, but I would what's say... A, what's, a, what's a projection? I mean, if you, you save 8 million on the hotels, what, is, what are you paying for the, the lodging? Uh, About, I'm sorry, the bedding. Estimate. Maybe maybe that brings it down about, uh, this was 8.4, maybe it brings it down to, maybe we're spending a million dollars now on lodging. So roughly a million dollars. Yeah, so, so you still have a $7.4 million savings from the 13 million. Yeah, correct. So it's safe to say you can take $7.4 million off the 13 million right away. Yes, but, uh, but then if you go down the list, there's a couple uh, of the things that have gone up, you know, as far as. So, but let, let's yeah. just, oh, yeah, go we're ahead. at 6.4 now. Yes, sir. Okay, and then we can add from 6.4. So when we're at 6.4 with a $13 million projection. Now, out of, that, out of the $13 million projection, and real simple, we estimated that we would get how much in in-kind? Six million. Six million. And how much have we received to date? In just in kind? Yes. Why don't I put a total here? Let's see, four hundred thousand, including the hundred thousand dollars that was given from Ken Court, right? Was that considered that's in kind? That's cash. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's cash. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so what is the in kind? Just give me the five hundred. I, I I don't have an I don't have it added here. Do you mind if I just give you the rough sure. number? Sure. Rough, rough is fine. Five six. Yeah, I would say we have about a, a million dollars in income. Oh, so you only received a million dollars out of the six million projection. Wow. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna come up about five million dollars short of in kind. Uh, that that's correct. But um, but like I said, there was some savings in other other okay, areas. Okay, so we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah, so you're yeah. you're about five million short on in kind. So we're at six point four million at cost now. A million dollars of that 6.4 million in in kind, but it's a five million dollar shortfall. So you 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 would have to add the extra five million to that 6.4 million, correct? So you're back to uh, 11.4 million now of cost, because the cost yeah. if you're not getting the in kind, you're getting the, you're going to have to pay the cost from the government's perspective uh, portion, correct? Um, I, 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 I see what you're trying to say, but uh, I'm just trying to, is, trying to calculate in my head. So but. if you're $5 million short, you either erase that $5 million of in-kind services completely, or you add that $5 million cost to the $6.4 million that you projected, and then you save from housing. You, you, you're still under the 13 million, but you would have to add it somewhere or get rid of it, correct? You're not gonna be able to carry a $5 million deficit for in-kind if you're not going to build any services for the in-kind. Yeah, I, 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 I think the best way to do it is, um, you know, that, that was the original budget that the they did in, 20, yeah, in 2013. Okay. Uh, since then, we scrubbed through it, okay. and we were getting you know, actual costs, and getting actual down. things. So. Look, I would just kind of break it down into the main, the main uh, uh, budget items, and maybe I'll give that to you. So, of course, the capital improvement projects was a big investment. But that, is the capital improvement projects part of the 6.4 million, 
or is it part of the in kind or is it a little bit of both? Oh uh, no, it's part of the uh, six point four. So okay. So total total uh, cash expenses needed for the the festival is going to be that seven million. And total cash. To total estimated cash, cash for needs. the entire fest pack goes from thirteen million to seven million. Um, but seven million was always the cash needs, and so okay. that that in kind of kind of shrunk down. But the cash needs at seven million is still what we need. Okay. Um, so where is that five million dollars coming from? Where is the five million dollar debt deficit? Because if you only got if you if you balance for six million dollars in in kind, and you only to date have twenty two days left in your five million short, do you how, how are you? How are you adding this together? How are you going to either pay for it or get rid of it? Because then you would have to add that to the seven million. Um, I, I think that's. I think they were planning a lot of the uh, hotel costs to be given in kind at, at a special rate. So but that it, that comes down. Okay. So, but that's not the entire five million. So you give give a million dollars. Give a rough estimate of another million dollars in in kind that you didn't receive from the hotels, or you did. You're still four million dollars short. So where's where is the, f are we gonna not have, in give me a service that was in kind. You said Black Construction gave you in kind of $160,000, correct, 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 to build those yeah. metal uh -huh. huts. Uh -huh. Say Black Construction didn't do that. You're $160,000 in a deficit now for your in kind. So you would not have those huts, correct? Mm -hmm. And if you did decide to have those huts, then that 160,000 would have to come from the government's portion. Yeah, we'd add that to the cash. You would there. add that to the yeah, cash. Correct. So now, instead of 160,000, we're at nearly 5 million. So are we going to get rid of the in-kind projection, or yeah. are we oh, going yeah. to add that to the cash? Oh, I'm sorry, I see what you're asking. Yeah, so, so what's, what's kind of happened in the budget is the in-kind, like I mentioned, is at a million. And so we need- That we collected, that right? We, yeah, that, that okay. we've collected, and so at the end of the day, the, the total budget, cash and in-kind will probably be, you know, uh, seven cash and the million in-kind and a little bit more as we collect. So maybe uh, eight, eight, a little bit. So, okay, so rough in estimate, you're going to say, yeah. I mean, because you have 22 days left and yeah. you're probably not going to get a million dollars in 22 days, right? Correct. So yeah. is it safe to say that that, that deficit that, that you projected of in-kind is no longer there? Correct. So yeah. the services, whatever yeah. you guys expected, is not going to be a part of FESPAC. Correct. Okay, so yeah. we're not adding that to the cash value. Y yes. So the correct. cash yeah. value is now six po seven million total for FESPAC, and you add the $1 million for the in-kind. In -kind, so correct. we're at an $8 million to total, total expenditure. Yeah. Okay. From that $8 million, I think the question was asked today if we would have to come back here for any type of funds that might have been overseen. Are we absolutely certain? Because I think the answer should have been reality, yes, we're going to be back here. Maybe not within the 22 days, but we're definitely going to have to address some issues that we might have overlooked or we might be short on. Because if, if we're coming up $5 million short on the on a projected in-kind, and we're saying that out of the $8 million, a million of that is in-kind, $7 million is cash, and that $7 million is pretty much already spoken for, there may be some extra expenses that we have not addressed. So you would have to come back and ask for, for more money or an appropriation. And, and, and that biggest expenditure would probably be the overtime. Uh, yeah, so that, that was what was, was discussed earlier, so, so we have to get clarity on that. Uh, as far as other, besides those three areas, I, I'm not aware of any. any okay. Yeah, I, I think we've covered everything else within uh, this so budget we're going to have to, we're going to have to convene again. I'm not sure if it's committee as a whole, but we're going to have to convene again once more to pay the outstanding overtime for FESPAC. Uh, That's safe to say. I mean, because if you say no, what you're saying is the eight million dollars will cover the overtime. That's that's how I understand it. Oh. We're going to be back here appropriating money for overtime. It's it's. Senator McCready, the government support from from the government of Guam 
is was a part of the the in kind services sure. that were needed to be provided. Okay. And, and and But the 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 law enforcement are not giving in kind services, are they? No. This, the, the, so we that's are what the I'm government. We're, we are. It is a government function. So sure. the the services that will be provided by the government without the logistical uh, materials would be in kind. Okay, but my my question is, we are not getting, we are not addressing anything more than this eight million dollar total expenditure for FESPAT. We're not addressing any of it. Eight million dollars is the threshold that we are addressing, and eight million dollars is what minus the million. $7 million is what we are here to appropriate to a total amount, correct? So $7 million is what the government is contributing and this legislature will appropriate. A million dollars is in kind. The coordinating committee, uh, based on the approval of the budget, was $13 million. Okay. Five of that was going to come from appropriations. Two sure. million was going to come from the uh, community at large, okay. from businesses. That has run short based on the request. So, so that, my question that was based my, on the approval. So my, there was a request to come in to ask for I the additional. I understand that. All I'm asking for is since we fell short of the anticipated revenue, we are still at that threshold of $7 million. In other words, we did not lower the cost. What we did was we increased the government's cost, right? Correct? Correct. The okay. The government. So I'm not arguing that. What I'm saying is we increased the government's cost because we fell short, but we did not increase the government's cost to entirely address the entire cost of FESPAC. So the government is still going to be in a deficit unless the business or the in kind or the, the cash uh, the, the cash from the businesses that you guys fell short pay for the overtime. The government is on the hook for the overtime. Uh, correct, and um, I, I think the question uh, that the speaker posed was to uh, consult with the governor's office to get their sure. plan about how to handle that, whether that's they need to come back I to this body earlier. for, yeah. All I'm yeah, trying yeah. to say is the reality of the situation is we are, are going to be back here because we haven't fully addressed the entire amount of the FESPAC festivities. Because you can't say that the overtime is not part of the $7 million. That's going to be on that line, right? When the ledger comes out and you guys are finalizing the entire cost, that $7 million might go to $9 million, correct? Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I, I can't really speak for the, it's you know, going the executive to, branch. Okay, it's how going they would. to go north, correct? It's, it's not going to be, a, when we're all said and done, $8 million is not going to be the final cost of FESPAC. It's going to be Senator, north of $8 million. What was approved by the coordinating uh, committee versus what is being requested okay, for? That's not right my, now is there, that's not that my there, question, those, there, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and I'm really in I'm order not in order to go above the the projected cost of 13 million. It's not 13, ex. Madam Chair. It's eight. It's seven. Madam Chair. Yes, please. Sir, if I, I think what the senator is asking is a really good um, question, and it, it's consistent with what we asked earlier. That if the overtime needs needs to be addressed right now, I think I don't know how much more needs to be said. That if the overtime uh, for those agencies that are going to be providing those direct services to FESPAC, if that authorization or appropriation is needed, then now's the time to do it. If if we're not going to do it in this bill, then no one should ever expect that the legislature should have to come back and address it. And I think that's what I Senator uh, understand, and, and they're going to get the clarification, Senator okay. Respicio. And because if we right know back. that it needs to be addressed and we don't we address, address it, address now, it now. now and we address it later, then the criticisms will be on the legislature that That's we, right. we didn't I, 
Yeah, and I and thank I, Senator McCready for bringing that point up. And I think when he when when he speaks about addressing it now, at least I want to get on the record as saying that there is a situation that we're going to have to address, and not and as he said, not come back to the legislature and say, well, the legislature didn't appropriate enough money for FESPAC. So we're at seven million dollars. We agree on that, correct? Yes. Okay. My question again is, are we going to be north of seven million dollars when? Fest pack is over. I, yeah, I mean, if you, if you include the 1.2 request, then well, you you have to. I mean, why wouldn't yes. you? It's not a special. It's not a special yeah. fund or a or a prior obligation. This is this is this is operating expense that we're talking about. Overtime is an operational expense, yeah. and so, so I would be correct, a lot yeah. more comfortable. Uh, if we could, if we could see a projection of overtime, to say that this is no longer seven million dollars, because because really it, that seven million is a moving target, and and it's not moving downward; it's moving upward. I think you've hit the seat, you've hit the floor of savings. Correct? There's no more savings. You're not cutting any more services. You're done. Seven million is it? So. We have to, we have to, we have to consider moving upwards from seven million dollars, and that's what I'm trying to get at. So, after this is all said and done, are we going to be north of seven million dollars, and will we be back in here appropriating money? Yeah, uh, and and these are all great, great questions, Senator McCready. Uh, I will get back to you. I'll, I'll get these answers for you. Okay. And, but, and get back to you. Yeah. But you, you, you haven't, you haven't addressed the overtime that we all know is going to happen. It, I mean, we know that it's going to be north of of seven million dollars. We know that. So all I'm asking you t for is to be realistic, and just to say, I listen. I support you. I, I'll do anything that you guys need that we have the money for. I'm supporting you. All I'm asking is for your support to the legislature to say, yes, we will be back here appropriating the unappropriated money, which looks like it's going to be the overtime of law enforcement, because we have not added it to the seven million dollar total projection of the cost of FESPAC. That's that's all I'm asking for. That's it. It's a simple answer. I, I'm not asking you for the total number. Of, yep. of hours that's going to be worked for overtime. I'm not asking you for the total number of costs. I'm just asking you to tell the legislature that in reality, we're going to be here asking you for money to pay for this overtime. That's it. I think that's fair because when they asked the question last time, uh, earlier this morning, from what I heard was that this was this was all we needed to appropriate, and then FESPAC, in our eyes, as far as appropriation from the legislature mm -hmm. standpoint, was, was done. We didn't have to do any more work on this. But I don't think that's entirely accurate, because $7 million is not the final budget that we need for FESPAC. Yeah, I, I totally understand. So we did re receive, as an organizing committee, a request from those three agencies to cover overtime um, expenses related to FESPAC, so that is a real expense. Um, why I say I'll get back to you is I, I can't speak for the, uh, the governor's okay. office on how to handle okay, that. I'm not asking you to speak for that. Yeah. Can I, can I ma Madam Chair, yeah. can you just agree that $7 million is not the total number that we need and the total number is going to go up and the legislature is going to have to appropriate the money? I, Senator, I mean, that's you know, why, you know that, the truth, Senator, and, and I just that, want you that to That is why the additional 1.3, based on the government's request coming down, uh, was was needed. Sure. So if you're asking, I support based the on bill. I support your bill, and I support you, you not bifurcating them and putting them on, on with it, with with each other, and, and supporting the efforts of FESPAC. I support that 100 percent. All I'm asking is for you to acknowledge the fact that seven million dollars isn't the total number. That's it. It's going to go north of $7 million. That, that's a fair question. I'm just asking for an honest answer. And you, Madam Chair, you know exactly what the answer is, so I'm just asking you to tell me the answer. Uh, Senator uh, You know $7 million is not enough. 
I, that, that, based on the obligation that the government was I'm, asked I'm, to I'm put in. I'm just asking for an answer. I'm not asking for based on. Just give me an answer of the $7 million is going north, and we're going to have to appropriate the money. That's all I'm asking for. Senator. Please. Based on the request that's coming down, the government has provided in appropriations, including the 1%, set aside more than $5 million. The committee has fell short, and that's why there's an additional request of 1.3. Okay. And, and can you that's where just we're at. acknowledge for, for this so body? So I'm just saying Can you just acknowledge for this body? You're, you're, you're on a different subject. I'm asking one question. Can you just acknowledge? And I support you. I support this bill. Can you just tell me that we're going north of $7 million? That $7 million is not the accurate amount. That's all. It's a yes or no, ma'am. It's a yes or no. We'll be back in here appropriating the money. Yes or no? That's it. I'm just asking for a yes or no. Will yeah, we be back I, here appropriating I, the money? You do know, Madam this, Chair. At, you at, do at know. At this time, uh, Senator McCready, uh, I, as oversight chair of, uh, of tourism, I want to share that based on what was provided from the coordinating committee, an additional 1.3 was okay. asked. Okay. So you know what? I'll answer my own question, and the, qu the answer is yes. We will be here, and we will have to appropriate more money. Senator Morrison, you're recognized. I wasn't you. done. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to ask for the record. Um, um, I need to ask the remaining uh, speakers, my colleagues, um, if I may, uh, from the senators that have asked to speak, are there any more questions for uh, Mrs. Kikigi and Mr. Calvo? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Senator thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I, thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate your, your efforts this morning. And I, I wish we had this panel here before us. I, and there were some very he heavy statements that were made yesterday um, uh, by uh, some of our colleagues. And understanding what we know now uh, with uh, maybe the more appropriate officials that are, that are here to answer these questions and know know uh, and validate and, and verify uh, what's in the what's in the hot uh, surplus fund uh, we now have our, our questions answered there <clears throat> but given uh, given um, uh, the fact that statements were made on the record uh, yesterday and no, no disrespect to my colleagues but obviously we were confused with the information that was provided and uh, that's been uh, corrected validated this morning um, Madam Speaker, all due respect to uh, my colleagues. There were some statements made yesterday and, um, you know, some heavy statements, uh, heavy words used that, that are on the record. And it's only fair and appropriate that, uh, that, that since B.B. Mars is here and some officials from DOA is here, uh, uh, even the perception that was made that there's some fraudulent activity that was taking place through this whole process. And the only members that were present at that table were yourself and and uh, all due respect to the manager and the deputy manager. Uh, of course, I want to uh, hopefully uh, erase that perception that was uh, uh, put out there in our community. So since B.B. Mars is here and, and, and DOA officials are here, given I understand what you provided here and corrected and uh, made, it, made the uh, ad adjustments necessary, answered the questions of the, the appropriate chair, appropriations chair, do you uh, uh, feel uh, otherwise compelled? I'm not sure if you were following yesterday to uh, respond to those statements that there was fraudulent activity with this process. I wasn't tuning into the uh, session yesterday, but if uh, that was said, I, I'd have to object. Obviously, I, I, I'm not aware that that was stated for the record, but uh, I, I, the comment I can make is that I, uh, th there shouldn't be any fraudulent activity or uh, deceptive, uh, you know, mindset and, and information and, and uh, data that we provide. So we do our best. Um, not everybody is perfect. And uh, I would admit if I if I did something wrong or did or misrepresented numbers, but certainly it was it was all done in the spirit of 
being upfront, being honest, and just being truth truthful. So if a statement like that was, was made, then I, I really wish they would correct the record, if anything, as you are raising that issue now. I appreciate it. And thank you, Madam Chair, and I thank Bibi Mar for, for having or allowing me to ask that question, Madam Chair, because you know these, these statements are on the record, and it's, it's only fair. Uh, uh, you know, we do have, do, we, we don't expect always a, a pretty sight down there. We're gonna ask tough questions, but you know, again, I, I, I like the fact that we have a panel here that uh, has the, uh, the appropriate officials here to, to make this very clear uh, uh, what we're, we're looking for and what we can validate and actually uh, uh, make sure that uh, how we proceed here, we proceed in a, in a orderly fashion. But I, I, again, no disrespect to my colleague, but uh, uh, there was a lot of confusion yesterday. But those, those statements were made and when, when heavy words are used like that, I, I owe it to uh, the hardworking uh, government officials that weren't present here that, uh, that prepare these fiscal notes to respond accordingly. So I thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing that opportunity and I'm putting that on the record. Chief Massey, Senator Morrison. Uh, Senator Tom Atta, you're recognized for inquiries. Th thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just have three questions. Um, the, the first question that I have is, uh, I guess it was generally characterized that the 1.3 million that is being requested is for operations and logistics. That's kind of like the little hand, big map sort of thing. So can you maybe break that down? I, I don't want a dollar for dollar blow, but more, but more so uh, the, you know, the, the general areas, fuel for transportation fuel, food services, uh, utility services. So maybe, you know, if you can kind of give that, that broad uh, general categories. Uh, thank you, Senator Ada. Sure, um, um, I mean, we have, I'll just kind of maybe go down my budget list. Uh, you know, uh, we have to provide uh, uh, Paseo Stadium performance logistics, you know, the construction of stages, uh, sound and lights for that, uh, Paseo Stadium per perimeter logistics. These are things like portable toilets, so forth, sinks and stuff for for uh, for that area. Guerrero Field logistics, including bleachers, uh, the operations center logistics, tables and chairs, Xerox machines, uh, our IT system for the badging and all, uh, that and so forth. Um, we have our traditional opening and closing and ecumenical ceremony logistics. So opening and closing uh, ceremonies, this will include things like uh, costumes for the over 600 local performers that'll be, that'll be there. Um, of course, uh, cultural village logistics, decorating uh, the huts, decor and lighting, uh, entrance arch, exit, Arch uh, concessionaires, the hut construction, which was donated in kind by Black Construction. Uh, for housing, some of the big costs were providing the uh, futon, linen, and, and for the um, uh, for the delegates coming in for their bedding. Uh, a big, a big, a big amount is for the meals. Uh, we have to feed over 3,000 delegates and 1,000 to 2,000. Uh, volunteers, so that that comes in at about a million dollars. So that that's a big cost right there. Um, also, communication. So we have to broadcast. One of the requirements is that we provide a broadcast satellite feed to the other islands, of uh, and Australia and and all around the Pacific. Um, so there we had it at uh, equipment and materials at 150,000 to provide the satellite uplink. We were able to negotiate that down to 50,000. So these are the the kind of costs that we're looking at um, for um, uh, for the things. Uh, we had to buy uh, uh, NEPA for the huts, NEPA leaves. Um, we were gonna use local NEPA leaves, but we don't have enough and you know we don't wanna take what little we have on Guam, so we had to bring that in. Um, you know, everything from signage, uh, uniforms for volunteers. So these are the logistical uh, costs, but so total logistics uh, expenses for FESPAC came in at 4.2 million. That's the, that was what's approved by the organizing committee. We're, of course, we're, you know, as we get actual costs, like I mentioned, like on the satellite, it was budgeted at 100,000. We were able to get in at 50. So we're trying to find, 
you know, as you get closer and get the actual cost, we're trying to bring everything down as much as possible. Um, in, in addition, the other big expenses for FESPAC were the FESPAC village uh, huts, the 34 concrete huts uh, down there at, at Paseo. Um, the total price tag for that project was $2.19 uh, uh, The other big uh, category items is under programming. So these, these are the Kaha artists. So that's kind of, that's divided up into traditional arts, visual arts, performing arts, literary arts, the diaspora, the, the people coming from the states to participate, and forums, workshops, and seminars. The budget for that total category was a little over 700,000. I had mentioned the logistics at 4.2. So those are the kind of big, those are the, uh, the, the big uh, capital improvement, programming, logistics are the big, uh, categories under the expenses and then that 4.2 that long list was what I mentioned under logistics specifically Okay, so so then uh, so what you gave me was probably a little bit more than than What what I had asked for? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. What, no, no, that's fine. That's yeah. fine because even in 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 providing that uh, it shows that you know there there's been a lot of calculations done putting dollars to uh, particular areas now, does, that then leads me to my next question. This 1.3 million that's being asked for in the bill, is that, was that based on some calculation that we're gonna use 1 million of that for food services? Or, or was that 1.3 million based on how much do you have in your pocket and that's how much I, I'm, I'm gonna ask for? Oh, yeah, so that was based looking at our total expenses, needs of cash of seven million, and then we're currently at just a little bit above five million, and then me, you know, having to start paying for stages and things, and then at the end, thinking about the almost million dollars in food that's going to happen during the festival, and then that's what's keeping me up at night that we spend everything on the stage and all the other things that we need for the festival, and then at the end, we have to provide the food for our delegates coming and. If GVB right now, because we're handling logistics, if we don't have the funds in the bank account, we're not going to be able to deficit spend. We just won't be able to, uh, if we can't certify the funds, we won't pay, pay for those costs. So that, that's why this request is so, uh, near, you know, so desperately needed at this time. Right. I understand that. I'm, yeah. I'm not yeah. questioning that. I, all, I'm, all I'm trying to get clear in my mind is, is this amount that's being requested based on, we know that's how much is available. And so that's how much we're going to ask for. But in fact, you really need a lot more than the 1.3. Well, the original request was the 1.5. And I, I think we were able to ascertain that we needed, uh, that there was 1.3 uh, available after the, the other bit. So, and that's why I mentioned earlier, I think it, there was another 90, there's another 90,000 uh, in, the, in the unappropriated or unreserved uh, fund balance. So. Okay. That's why I was kind of torn between that going to uh, capital improvement projects or FESPAC, which we're, we could use it uh, for the festival as yeah. well. And so, so I guess the way yeah. Solomon would have answered that question is he'll give 45 to FESPAC and 45 to safety projects. Yeah, that would be, that would be okay with me, I guess. That way my board, my board is still happy with me and my organizing committee is still happy with me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the final question that I have is to uh, Mrs. Kakigi. You know, when you were dis when we were trying to get an understanding of, uh, you know, the uh, the unreserved balances for 2015, 2016, and all that stuff. In in all that discussion, there was this figure that was mentioned several times of I believe what 5.2 million. 5.9 million? 5.9. 5.9. So I, I just want to clarify because it seems that although that 5.9 million was thrown out there, we're saying there's zero for 2016, uh, zero unreserved balance for in 2016 so far, and that with 2015, uh, there was only 2.3, and we're pretty much... Uh, going to take care of that one. Yes. So where did the other, um, uh, where, where did the other the difference, three million come from? Yeah, the difference is um, we already have uh, current appropriations tapping the hot surplus fund. 
So we took what um, the revenues from FY14 and we added to FY15. And then we deducted all the uh, current uh, revenue appropriations that tap uh, FY14 balance, uh, fund balance, and that's why we came out with the difference of 2.3 million. Okay, all right. So uh, that, thank you, Madam, um, Madam Chair. I, I, I think that answers my questions. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator Frank Hogan? Senator uh, Nervous Underwood, on the main. Thank motion. you. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. And I want I want to thank all of you for coming, and I just know how complex this whole project is. And I, yeah, you're having sleepless nights. I, I can only imagine, Mr. Denight. Um, you know, I, I do have a couple of questions relative to the impact on the Department of Education and utilizing the eight schools. You know, it was recently brought to my attention um, as early as yesterday um, that DOE has yet to receive 13 million, and that affects their operations. And operations, it's your utilities, it, it could even affect um, uh, the salaries. There are employees who will be utilized um, in those eight schools, is that correct? While the, while the eight schools are used, who will be providing the maintenance of the buildings, cleaning up the restrooms, and so on? Is that being privatized? Or will that be, will you be using DOE employees and, and would there be like a night differential that we would have to pay our employees, you know, when they go work beyond the, the normal, um, Hours. Uh, for the maintenance of the schools, uh, we're going to be outsourcing that to a maintenance company to provide that. Uh, but there are certain schools that have their own, that are uh, leased schools, like I think Court, uh, Tizen High School. And uh, I think they might be requiring that we use their uh, maintenance company so that we have to provide the, the funds for those maintenance company. And that was the reason why JFK was switched to GW is because the quotes we got to, to use uh, the JFK, uh, right. is it International Please. Builders or, mm -hmm. it, it was uh, to the maintenance was like 50,000 just to pay for their maintenance staff. So we said, mm -hmm. that, that's why we're trying to cut every, everywhere we right. can on the budget. So we said, let's use GW, then we can use our own mm -hmm. maintenance staff and, and brings the cost down a lot more. Also for JFK, we would have to construct showers Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, for $20,000 because there's not enough shower stalls. And then we have to break, take down the shower stalls after we're done. So, okay. yeah, we're, the, okay. so, we're, so we're, not, we're trying not to use, uh, obviously we're going to ask DOE to help uh, volunteer, especially uh, cleaning up the classrooms or, or getting them ready for the, uh, for the delegates. But, but for the actual operations, uh, we're trying to use uh, FESPAC volunteers and staff uh, and then also help with like GPD to help with security and so forth on the operations. So, um, Mr. Jeanette, can we just make sure that we cover um, the cost, potentially, if there are employees who will be utilized to be there during the night or the evening, you know, to just be available um, to our guests, just whatever it is, that if, if there will be night differentials, that that would somehow be covered not by DOE, because right now they're really short by close to $12 million in cash of what they're supposed to be provided. I'm also concerned about the additional potential cost to the utilities, because um, you will be having, um, obviously you'll have tenants there, they'll be using water, more water for uh, the restrooms and so on, or is that something that, that would just, uh, be, I think those are be all provided all, for by by DOE. I, I know we've been working very closely with the superintendent on on, on all these uh, details, so we'll we'll have a plan to address all of that. But um, yeah, as far as the utilities and so forth, I, I do know that the you know we are 
ending the school year a little bit early, right? So the school year would be going on. So that's mm -hmm. kind of an offset. But I don't know if it's going a little bit longer than the average school year. But uh, just on the whole, I think we're asking everyone as much as possible. This is a Guam event. And I know resources are tight, but if everyone can chip in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and so far, uh, the superintendent and DOE has been very, very supportive. And so we're working together. And yeah, obviously, if there's a you know, a major expense that they can't absorb, then we'll, we'll try to work with them to, to, to help uh, uh, cover that cost. Yes. Yeah. So um, I, I do agree with you that this is actually, you know, it is our whole island. We are all going to be enjoying the festivities, and it's always going to impact um, the extent to which our island will be perceived by our visitors and the rest of the world because it, we can't just limit um, how how far reaching this will be that would it would not just be the Pacific Islands right so I'm just really talking right now for for the general public who don't understand because we do get uh, emails from other community members when we have uh, concerns about the budget and um, how much is needed based on the fact that maybe some of the projected donors some of those who wanted to donate who you thought would donate actually that there's a shortfall um, so to to the general public when they see that our schools have not, as reported, have not received their cash uh, to date, that there are millions of dollars behind, behind in terms of uh, the cash that should have been released to them. When you have doctors who are talking about not having enough supplies um, at the hospital, then what it does is that um, without the itemized accountability of what you had just provided to us today, then it's very easy for the community to just wonder, you know, where our priorities are. So this is why um, I think that the questions that were raised by our colleagues here and your responses was just really important. You had outlined what you had anticipated um, you would have received and there was, what I understood is that there's a shortfall in what you projected to be um, receiving from uh, as donations, and then based on the expenditures that you are projecting, that you know you actually need cash right now to make this happen like right away. So I I would just suggest, Mr. Denight, that if you could, you know, you had a sheet there that outlined, you know, where you were trying to cut you know, get some savings and uh, reduce the cost, that if you had that, some, something like in a spreadsheet that shows to the public just really what you are doing, I think it would really help the, everyone to just come together. And maybe there are other um, private entities who would step up their donations. But I, I just want to commend you for the efforts that all of you are doing because this is really a very complex undertaking. And I, I know that we will all come together and I know this will succeed. But we also want to make sure that we are doing this, we are celebrating not at the expense of the other priorities of our community, education and health, but that we are taking everything and, and making decisions as a whole, that we are not hurting anyone in the process. So I think that that accountability that you had provided to us in writing would be very helpful and maybe you can just send it out as a, as a press release or something that the media can, can publish. Thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, definitely, and if I, if I may respond, just, um, you know, we meet our organizing, our organizing committee is made up of, uh, of uh, uh, Senator Barnes, also uh, Senator Respicio, Speaker Wampat, and uh, uh, Senator Torres. And so we go over the budget uh, at each meeting. So there's been actually, to, you know, as we get closer to the event now that there's, there's expenditures being made. So by next uh, organizing committee meeting, which will be uh, the second Wednesday of Mar uh, May, we'll have an updated budget with, um, but this was all provided to the media uh, 
as well as all the organizing committee because our, ours are public meetings. So we've been providing all this as well as, uh, as Senator Respicio mentioned earlier, we've been working with the, uh, uh, the OPA to do the pre-audit. And so she came out with those results. So we're being very transparent in providing all the information on all the expenditures. And I, I think it's been very um, uh, discussed thoroughly uh, at this point. But yeah, I appreciate your suggestions. And uh, at the same time, also uh, the event uh, I don't think it's really taking away from any of the other budget categories. We've been, it's been pretty much funded by the Tourist Attraction Fund, which is paid by the Hotel Academy Taxes. So thanks to uh, uh, Senator Barnes and her tourism uh, committee. And uh, this will definitely be an event that will have Guam in the spotlight globally. And I think it'll you know, just put our culture at, a, at another level and help us grow as we continue to, to feature our Chamorro culture on the world stage and, and build its brand. So, yeah. yeah. And so, Mr. Dunat, we understand that here. We know that the funding sources are different. But for the general public, yeah. I'm just saying that in general, when they're not, when the teacher is not getting her supplies, and then she's seeing that there's a party going on that's going to come, for sure. them, you know, it's, it, it, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I to totally understand. But, uh, you know, on that point, if I could just add is, uh, I think DOE has been really using the festival uh, as a tool to promote culture and learning of all the other islands. Um, you know, DFS did the Festival of Trees with all the schools on the island, and, and these students did a tremendous job. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes you, even living on Guam, you seem like you, you kind of, I know growing up, we didn't learn as much about the other islands uh, as we should, and these are our brothers and sisters and neighbors. So I think working with DOE has been fantastic, and the uh, festival, I think, will have some long-lasting educational effects that that I, I know we have to take care of uh, you know, the basics, but I, I think this is an important investment that we're making into this festival. Thank, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I, I think the misrepresentation is really coming from within the legislature. The misrepresentation about FESPAC and living within our means is really coming from Senator S. Nicholas, who started yesterday's hearing by accusing BBMR of providing some fraudulent document. And I want to state, state this for the record. It's really unfortunate that um, that's how this Committee of the Whole started. And it's unfortunate that that same uh, senator is not here uh, this entire morning to really listen firsthand to the kind of uh, discussions and, and honest uh, feedback that we're getting uh, from the panel, but also the hard questions that we're asking as members of the legislature. I don't believe any single senator has given uh, the governor a blank check when it came to FESPAC. I don't believe every single senator in here is a rubber stamper to any other entity. I mean, we do have ask the tough questions, but when I want to speak for myself, the questions I ask, I want to make sure that I'm responsible in how I go about asking it, and I don't make any allegations without having it being, and I don't make any allegations at all. I don't say things like this fiscal note that you're providing is fraud. And after we determined that, that the numbers were correct, but the funding source for that bill was not the same funding source, you know, we, we went through all of that to, to move that thing forward. and. Um, Director, I, I don't know if you'll ever get an apology for that uh, accusation. We've never seen an apology come from that same individual. We had his staffer go to one informational hearing and accuse another senator of having an illegal hearing. And then you have not received an apology from that staffer to date. And so I just want to isolate um, what's happening and all this misinformation that's going out. And it's, it's affecting all of us here in this legislature. It's affecting us not only as a uh, co-equal branch of government, but our images and our reputation are being maligned from within. And so I'm glad, Madam Chair, that you took us in the committee of the whole because no one has anything to hide and no one is hiding anything. Like I said, um, the level of transparency uh, it's been so much so that the public auditor stepped forward early on, and I, and I even commended the public auditor. I said, I believe this is the first time ever that you did a pre, um, what did she call it, a uh, condition of readiness to see if we're ready for FESPAC, but, but usually you've seen the public auditor only step in after the fact, but she's actually did her um, predeterminations to make sure that any 
uh, oversights or any matter that was overlooked can be corrected. And when she did say that the 34 huts that were uh, constructed uh, bypassed the procurement law because the AG wasn't consulted, what she didn't say is that there were uh, discussions with the Attorney General, uh, but then, you know, dotting the um, I's and crossing the T's by actually having the AG sign off wasn't done, but there were, <clears throat> there were pre-approvals or approvals during that process. Could, Chairman Knight, could you just uh, quickly speak to that? When the audit came out, the public auditor had some findings in her audit that there may have been some procurement violations because the AG wasn't consulted because it was over 500,000. And the second thing, the change order was also not um, uh, run through the Attorney General. Uh, you're 100% correct, uh, Senator Specio. So, uh, you know, at that time, the huts were done, uh, the procurement was done under CAHA. Uh, they did go to DPW and get the determination because I guess under the executive branch agencies, uh, they do have to go to, construction projects go to DPW unless they give a determination. So that step was done, but the, the step that they didn't send it to the AG was not completed. Uh, so working in FESPAC, it's, we're using multiple agencies to do procurements here. So in that procurement, CAHA was taking the lead, but was guided by DP, uh, DPR, uh, um, their chief, what was it, uh, Joe, oh. chief plan, I'm sorry, chief planner of DPR was helping uh, with the procurement on that, helping Kaha with the procurement. So he had sent the, um, the procurement over to GSA to, to do the review and there was a miscommunication. We had thought GSA had sent it over to, uh, to the AG to get signed off on. And so that was where the miscommunication was. But ultimately on that bid, there was only one bidder and you know the procurement is set up to make a fair bid. So uh, in that sense, there was no other bidder that was wronged by that procurement. But uh, so long story short, yeah, the, the, the OPA found out in her findings. And so CAHA is working now with the AG to, to look at the procurement file and, and check everything and, and go ahead and ratify it, ratify it if that action needs to be taken. But to your point, just, uh, we're trying to be, you know, as transparent as possible. Uh, the organizing committee that you sit on, and then you've brought it up in uh, uh, going into the uh, the event manager contract. So, yeah, you brought it up, and we went and we brought it to the AG and also to the OPA. And so we're just everyone's just trying to work together to make FESPAC a success and make sure we're doing, you know, everything we can, uh, everything we can do, and just being as transparent as possible with this. So, yeah, I appreciate the. The, the support since, from everyone. And since we're being uh, honest here, when I raised those concerns at the FESPAC Coordinating Council, you know, the, the criticism that I received from, from within the administration was that I was just trying to derail FESPAC, <laughs> right? And, but that, I mean, I say that to yeah. kind of also clear the questions that were being asked throughout the entire morning that no one here is trying to derail FESPAC. And I think that that message was uh, effectively communicated and also with respect to those 34 huts the reason for the change order was because it was in the flood zone and they had to elevate those uh, huts towards the end and oh yeah to, to the change order uh, what had happened is you could do a 10% uh, change order on the huts they did like uh, a, a just like a, a couple hundred dollars over the 10% threshold so they went back and ratified that but that also needed to go to the AG so all these are being uh, 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 taken back to the AG by Kaha that did the procurement to make sure. But uh, yeah, you, you brought up a valid point, and and at the committee level, we said we would address it, and we did, and we worked together with you to to make sure that that's going right. And uh, yeah, I just appreciate everyone's working together. Uh, it is very stressful planning any event, you know, your wedding or you know graduation party. But when you're talking about 3,000 delegates and you know another 10 to 15,000 people coming in for this. Uh, in 27 island nations, it's it's that much uh, uh, more stressful doing a major event like this. So of course, uh, you know, and, and and the clock is ticking. So so you know, and uh, in the spirit of uh, the yeah. continued cooperation, you know, I want to again ask what the vice speaker brought up, what Senator McCready brought up, what I also brought up with respect to overtime, because I really believe what's going to happen is they're going to um, incur and accrue for that overtime. And then the vice speaker is going to get a bill during the budget process right after FESPAC, and he's going to have to find, uh, and we're going to have to find together a funding source.
but the overtime is already owed to the employees. And then the employees <coughs> will get angry because they're not uh, paid on time. So m I know, Madam Chair, we're going to recess for lunch. Could you please get a letter from the FESPAC director and the governor asking us to appropriate for that? Because there is already a budget for overtime. And, and let's just cover it in this bill. And if it's the will of the body and there's eight votes for that, then mm -hmm. then so be it. But I just, I'm also concerned that if we don't account for that overtime expenditure now, when, and the speaker's already said we're not going to come into session in May uh, because of all these other activities that we have. And if we're forced to come down in session, it's not going to, it's not going to be really good. And if we know that these expenses are going to occur, then, and we don't authorize it, then that's also, you know, deficit spending or having this government be liable for an authorization that wasn't given in the first place. So we have a tremendous opportunity here to also recognize that uh, budgeted expense. And so if I can request that the FESPAC director, the chairman, and even the governor, because the governor's not hiding from anything, the governor actually penned a letter and transmitted a request to the legislature to introduce this bill for the 1.5 million. So I don't believe the governor would have any objection signing off on a letter that would um, also identify this funding source or whatever funding source. Uh, since TAF is the funding source, that's the decision that the governor's gonna have to weigh in also to help us make that policy call. But it would be helpful, Madam, Chair, if we come back after we recess for lunch and we have, we just include it. But I, I believe the request should come from the governor and from the FESPAC uh, director and the chairman of FESPAC so that, so that that's very clear that the request is coming from them and then we can, we can be in a position to properly dispose of that request. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader. Uh, do you have a point of information, Senator Spodon, or an Not inquiry? a point of information, but if I may just have one minute. And, and I know that we're past lunchtime, but I've been sitting here also listening. A lot of the questions have been asked and answered. But I just want to go to one of the issues that's been brought up uh, several times by a couple of our colleagues, and that's to some of the words that were said on the floor yesterday. And the reason why I want to go down this road, because it seems to almost uh, admonish one of our colleagues who made the statement. And I don't want to go down that road. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make, and this is basically to Department of Administration and, and BBMR, it underscores the necessity to make sure that the figures that are delivered down here are accurate. Because that's the point of miscommunication. I was the first one who raised the issue of the, the fiscal note on the original bill, because the numbers just didn't jive, it seems to me. There was a 2014 date. There was a 2016 date, and yet we were talking about a 2015 date. And so the only point I'm trying to make here, Madam Speaker, is really it's not an admonishment or anything else to uh, the, the agencies. It just I just want to underscore the importance of how, uh, uh, how necessary it is, to, especially when we're talking about the finances of our government and we're trying to understand whether we have those finances in place to make sure that those figures are accurate. We shouldn't have had to come into this meeting, probably, if those figures, first of all, were accurate, second of all, if they were understandable. And that's what I wanted to contribute at this point. Thank Madam you, Speaker. Uh, Senator Espera. Majority Leader, we're in motion to recess, too. Um, so move, but before we do our, even if we don't get the letter, then that means there's no uh, overtime issue. Okay, just so we're yes. clear. So we will recess till 2 o'clock. I know, but that's what I'm saying. When we come back from lunch, we better get the letter. So I move uh, to recess till 2 o'clock. Till 2 o'clock. Yeah. Thanks. We are.